Hi, I'm Julius Irving of the Philadelphia 76ers, and I'm ready for the New Jersey Nets. Today on CBS Sports. This is CBS. Does anyone have a great American car at the right price? We do! The Renault Alliance. The Alliance looks like a winner, performs like a winner. It's 1983 Motor Trend Car of the Year. Built in America and it's priced right. $55.95. Now get 11.9% financing to qualified buyers at participating AMC Jeep Renault dealers. Who makes the right deals? Your local AMC Jeep Renault dealers. The right guys. To climb a mountain without engine lock, this family depends on Amoco Premium Lead Free. And to accelerate faster, the Z28 Camaro depends on the same gasoline. Because Amoco Premium Lead Free is the highest octane lead free you can buy. From family wagons to high performance cars, you expect more from Amoco. And premium performance is one way you get it. When I started my special segment on Thursday's Child, I never realized so many people would care. That's Channel 2 News. If it concerns you, it concerns us. Warner Wolf, weeknights on Channel 2 News. Welcome to CBS Sports Sunday. Now, Brent Musburger. Good afternoon, everybody. We've got a full lineup for you today, and it starts with a basketball doubleheader. First, the Philadelphia 76ers meet the New Jersey Nets. This Sixer team is something special this year. Their goal, of course, an unprecedented 70-victory season. Now, to do this, they must win 20 of their remaining 24 games. Then, for us, it's on to NCAA action. Hank Raymond's Marquette team and Ray Myers' DePaul squad both know that in all likelihood, only the winner of today's showdown will be considered for an NCAA tournament berth. Then CBS Sports Sunday takes you to Atlantic City, where former world heavyweight champion Leon Spinks clashes with Carlos Sugar de Leon in a live 10-round cruiserweight bout that could set up a title shot for the winner. And from Aspen, Colorado. It is America's downhill. Such top racers as Phil Mayer of the U.S., Austria's Olympic gold medalist Franz Klammer, will be careening down the mountain at speeds of up to 80 miles an hour. Now, the race is set to begin two hours from now. And as you know, of course, there was too much snow yesterday, but there it has stopped in Colorado. They are out preparing the mountainside so that you can see the finest in the world come slashing down that slope a short time from now. And what a beautiful day out in Aspen. And just a short time ago, down in Buenos Aires, Argentina, United States, the defending Davis Cup champion, was eliminated by Argentina. It was Guillermo Vilas putting away John McEnroe in straight sets, 6-4, six 6-love, six and this 6-1, McEnroe nets the loser. And there it is. Argentina has, so Argentina the the has eliminated the United States, and they, of course, advance to the next round. Right now, let's send you out to the Meadowlands for the Nets and the 76ers. We'll see you at the half with NBA Commissioner Larry O'Brien. Most wins in a season. Most consecutive wins. They were the winningest team in history. That was 11 years ago. Now the Philadelphia 76ers are challenging that record. This week, the Sixers reached the 50 victory mark faster than anyone in history. However, two days ago in Boston, the Sixers were beaten by their arch rivals, the Celtics. Only the eighth setback of the year for Philadelphia. The Sixers are chasing the standard set by the 72 Lakers of Jerry West and Wilt Chamberlain. This year's Philadelphia story has yet to be written. Those who will help write it, the Sixers, four All-Stars. You know them, Irving Malone, Cheeks, and Tony. So today, from the Burn Meadowlands Arena, the assault continues as the Philadelphia 76ers take on the New Jersey Nets.
of a sellout crowd, over 20,000 fans at the Burn Meadowlands Arena in East Rutherford, New Jersey, as the Philadelphia 76ers take on the New Jersey Nets. They are both out of the Atlantic Division of the NBA. Look at that record for Philadelphia. 50 wins and 8 losses, looking for 70. New Jersey is in third place, but they're off to their best start in five years, and they are a playoff team for sure and a strong team for sure. And good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to NBA Basketball on CBS. I'm Dick Stockton. Now, Philadelphia lost to Boston Friday. They have an important mission. They have not lost two in a row at any time this year. That is a testimony to their amazing consistency. No team in the history of the NBA has ever gone through a season without losing two in a row. So Philadelphia obviously wants to end the losing streak at one. How great are the Sixers? We'll have to wait until the playoffs and until after the season to decide that. My partner, as usual, is Bill Russell. We talk about the New Jersey Nets, and I think that when we talk about the Nets, we have a team that could give Philadelphia a lot of trouble. They have made great strides, and I think they're a sleeper. You know, Dick, uh, the Nets are the Rodney Dangerfield of the Atlantic Division. They have the fifth best record in the NBA, but because they're in a division with Philadelphia and Boston, they get no respect. But these guys can play with the big guys. You know, in Buck Williams, their second-year forward out of Maryland, they have the second leading rebounder in the league. So this is not just a team that's uh, easing along. They're playing outstanding basketball, and like I said, they can play with the big guys. All right, and they're going to go against the big guys in this game. The starting lineups for the Philadelphia net game at the stronger power forward, Mark Ivoroni of the 76ers, Buck Williams, who you just talked about with the Nets. At the small forward, Julius Irving of the Sixers, Albert King, one to watch for the Nets. The centers, Moses Malone, the best rebounder, Daryl Dawkins, who played with Philadelphia last year. At the playmaking guard spot, Maurice Cheeks. One of the best for the Sixers, Michael Ray Richardson, the newest acquisition for the Nets. Andrew Tony, the scoring machine for Philadelphia, and Otis Birdsong make up the starting lineups for this afternoon's game. The best records ever in the NBA. We talked about the Lakers. The Philadelphia 76ers, of which Billy Cunningham was a player back in 67, won 68 games. The Cel Celtics of 73 also won 68, and the Milwaukee Bucks won 66 back in 71. And Philadelphia is challenging all of that this season. And as Brent mentioned, they've got to go 20-4 and four to achieve that. Billy Cunningham may not get the credit he deserves for putting together a team with two new starters in their lineup this year. And going at that 50 and 8 pace. And a great coaching job is well done by Larry Brown of the New Jersey Nets in his second year. So we're set to go. Larry never had a losing season. Coached with Denver of the NBA and Denver of the ABA before that. The Nets are in white and the Sixers are in the dark uniforms. They're red. Dawkins and Malone jump. And it's controlled by Philadelphia. Cheeks is guarded by Richardson. And Richardson has a four-inch height advantage. Buck Williams blocks that out of bounds. With Daryl Dawkins and Buck Williams, the Nets have the ability to close down the middle like all the good teams do. Julius Irving is fouled by Bernard King, and I think, Bill, that's going to be one of the matchups we'll look at today because while King has done so well offensively, he's had his problems defensively against Julius along with a whole lot of other forwards. <laughs> Driving in his Mo Cheeks, double team, and it is still Philadelphia ball. The officials for today's game, Jake O'Donnell and Ed Middleton. Sixers have won the two previous games between the teams. Moses Malone. He hits the bank shot, and I'll tell you what, I think the Nets will give Malone that shot today. That may be a mistake. No, he can he can make that shot. Uh, there were times there were time in his career when people thought he couldn't shoot that shot, but he's one of those guys that is a, a, a pro that has worked in his game, and those kind of shots he can make them now. Buck Williams on the follow-up, and we'll have another foul on Michael Ray Richardson. Here's Julius Irving, who was the MVP in the All-Star game. He suffered a scratched cornea recently and wore gargles. But his eye feels much better. Andrew Tony picked up by Birdsong with a pick by Julius Irving. Tony 
Feeding inside to Julius. Ten seconds on the shot clock, and Andrew Tony hits from the corner. Interesting uh, matchup, I think, especially in the first quarter uh, between Daryl Dawkins and Moses Malone, because Daryl Dawkins has a tendency to get into foul trouble, so it might not last much longer than the first quarter. But until then, maybe interesting matchup. Now the, you just mentioned Dawkins. And Dawkins over the top is called for the foul. So the words are no sooner out of your mouth than Daryl Dawkins, who has committed more personal fouls and has been disqualified more than anyone in the league, commits his first. You know, as you play the game, speaking of Daryl Dawkins, as you play the game, there are certain fouls you will get from working hard out there. But he makes that one or two little foul that some people call dumb fouls, that uh, and that's what gets you in foul trouble. Andrew Tony feeds Julius. And it goes in, and they say the no basket. Ivoroni touched the ball. Ivoroni cannot touch the ball when it's on top of the cylinder. Billy Cunningham shakes his head at that one. So the if score is four to two. The Sixers lead opening minutes. Now, what does the Nets want to do if they want to stay with this Philadelphia team? Is to make them play the half court game, offensively and defensively, to try their patience defensively, to work the ball around and see if they'll stay with seven or eight passes. And defensively, not to let them get that running game going. Because when you get a, uh, the good teams can run on you. Richardson is on Mo Cheeks. Into Malone. And a foul, no basket. And Daryl Dawkins has picked up two fouls. Dawkins has two. That is the fourth team foul also against Philadelphia. Dawkins acquired by the Nets in the offseason. The man who replaced him, Moses Malone. Questions before the season, could he fit in with the Philadelphia style? He answered all those questions, and no one talks about how much money he's making anymore, do they? No, but uh, IRS does. Here's Larry Brown, who along with Cunningham, both played at the University of North Carolina. Dawkins goes out of the game, and he's replaced by Mike Jeminski, a third-year center out of Duke. So Malone, pretty good free throw shooter for a big man, gives Philadelphia a four-point lead. Albert King brings it across. King, a good outside shot, a streak shooter. And he's guarded by one of the better defensive players in the league, Julius Irving, which most people don't realize how good a defensive player he is. And they don't realize how physical he is either, I think. You see, the way you break a game open is defense. You, if you score 10 straight points and the other team scores 10, you, you're even. Albert King on a follow-up. So what the Nets are doing early, they're getting the second shots. Buck Williams for the first bucket. And Albert King there. So it's 6-4 to four now. Irving setting a pick and Cheeks trying to penetrate. And a good defensive play by Birdsong. Got it to Jaminski. Now to Michael Ray Richardson. And Irving with a good defensive play. Ivoroni gets it back to Julius. Two on two. And Julius was just looking for anyone. He found Cheeks. Maurice Cheeks last Monday scored 32 points against Golden State, a career high. So while he's not the most dangerous offensive player for Philadelphia, you can't leave him totally alone. Blocked by Malone on Birdsong's attempt. Julius has it. Four on three. And they're a little sloppy. Three on one, Nets. King. Good defensive hustle by both teams on that exchange. The Nets started out 13 and 13. They've gone 24 and 9 since then. Mark Ivoroni misses. And here come the Nets again with a four on three advantage. Albert King, Jaminski. And that's how you make a fast break work. Get the rebound and get that ball out of there. The forward, if he doesn't have an outlet right away, makes one or two dribbles, two dribbles at the most, and they get the ball to one of the guards. Maurice Cheeks, one of the best point guards, no longer considered underrated, knows to get the ball to the right people. Malone defensed well by two or three inside, and here's Michael Ray Richardson again. He's been bothered by an ear infection, did not play Friday night, shows why the Nets wanted him. Very talented guard. New Jersey leads it. First lead of the game for the Nets. Loop it in to Doc. Cheeks to Doc. And Doc congratulates Maurice on the fine pass. It had to be a perfect one. 
And Morris is very capable of that. He's one of the probably the most underrated player in the league, I'd say. Seven minutes and ten seconds to go in the first period. Dick Stockton and Bill Russell. Two of the strong teams of the Atlantic Division. Sixers in the Nets. Birdsong off balance. Buck Williams battles on the offensive board. Malone! That is Vincent Moses Malone. Stay with it until you come up with it. And Tony hits the baseline shot. Andrew Tony. And yet, you're right, Bill. Moses Malone is devastating. Never gives up. And sets the pace for the rest of the club with how hard he works. That's why no one talks about how much money he makes when you see a guy working that hard the whole game. Michael Ray Richardson comes back, and so we have another tie. Our fourth deadlock of this early game. Nearly halfway through the opening period. Ivoroni, who does not play as much as some of the other players off the bench. Fall away shot missed by Malone, and here come the Nets. Birdsong. Injured last year. The Jaminski blocked by Malone, and they're going to call a foul on Moses. And the Nets are going to call a timeout. Keep in mind, Philadelphia is playing without Bobby Jones, who is going to be lost for two weeks with a broken toe, and the Sixers will have a chance to look at some of their newer players that have helped their bench. We'll be back. On CBS, today's game is sponsored by Miller Highlight. Welcome to Miller Time. U.S. Armed Forces, it's a great place to start. And by IBM. There's a time in life for the young to say, I want something else, a different way. The town's the same, the people too. School is over, needs something to do. The services have it, it'll really show. You'll see new places, you'll really grow in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. Challenge, adventure, excitement too, a time to enjoy and see something new. Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. You'll work hard, feel really free, serving your country for all to see in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. Be part of a team, be friends forever, a part of the services you won't forget ever. Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. It's a great place to start. An IBM office system can do something amazing. It can take people from anywhere in a company, whether they're across the hall or across the country, and electronically link them together so they can share many kinds of information. And IBM designs office systems to make any size business more efficient. And that makes it easier for everyone to get their jobs done quickly. Like a lot of people, I'm taking better care of my body. Better care of my skin, too. With Skin Bracer Aftershave. Shaving is rough, so I use Skin Bracer. It cools and smooths skin. Tightens pores. That's the tingle. Smells great, too. But Skin Bracer's not cologne. It's skin care that feels good. That's why more men are saying, thanks. I needed that. Skin Bracer, now in Spice, too. Takes care of men who take care of their skin. Skin Bracer Aftershave. Bye, men. An unlikely starter on a team of this caliber, Mark Ivoroni, who played at Virginia and played parts of the last three years in Italy, originally was a third-round draft choice by the Knicks four years ago. Why do they have him as a starter, Bill? Well, you need a guy like that because, Dick, there are not enough shots to go around. And, uh, when you have five guys out there, there are enough shots for four guys. And you have to have a guy that's going to work, take what's left over, work the uh, offensive boards and play uh, and be expendable in that he can file out guard the, one of the tough guys defensively. And it's a role that has to be filled on, on all the teams. And this is a guy that get, doesn't get much credit, but he's very important to the team. You're looking at Mike Jaminski, who's been the top big man off the bench for the Nets. Second best foul shooter on the team, but he missed two there. And we, I believe, have a lane violation. And it is against Philadelphia, and so Jaminski is going to get another chance. Jaminski has had asthma problems lately. He has been plagued with injuries and ailments in his short career, surgery to his back and his elbow, and a serious staph infection. In his third season, and he makes the free throw, and the Nets have a lead. Interesting observation about Ivoroni, who certainly wouldn't start on many other clubs, but it gives Billy Cunningham a chance to read the situation of a game. And, of course, I think Ivoroni's better because he has those four other fine all-stars. That always makes you better because there's not much pressure on you because no one's going to guard you 
that when they double team you're the guy they leave Malone got inside and there's no way you can stop him I think Jaminski is going to need a lot of help inside against Moses well when Moses does better than most people give him credit for because he does not get a lot of offensive fouls is he moves very well without the ball to get position inside close when he wants because he likes to shoot inside the, the six or eight feet five and a half minutes remaining first period and there's the a new version of Buck Williams jump shot Buck Williams last year was strictly a rebounder he's now become an offensive threat and several and coaches say he could be the top 10 in the league and next year he's gonna start talking <laughs> maybe maybe not Mo Cheeks never started talking <laughs> and he's been a great point guard for five years now and what I when I say that I'm I, I said it facetious but it's, it's important that a guy talks because the leadership of, from being a good player sometimes this hurt that he says things to the other players Birdsong in the lane, banks it in. Otis Birdsong, third leading scorer, averaging nearly 15 and a half points per game, and the Nets have a three-point lead. That's their biggest lead so far. Andrew Tony, the scoring machine, and he can beat you so many ways, inside, from the corner, from way outside, and he can has the muscle to take you in. You know, uh, Andrew Tony gets his shots off all, over almost anyone. Did you know that he can dunk backwards? No, I didn't. That's it's six three, and he plays bigger than six three, and I guess that sells, says it. Shooting percentage is pretty high off the top of this game. Malone gets the rebound on the miss by Albert King, and he a good passed pass by Malone. Although the, the Nets got back defensively. This continued double, double dribble, and they'll turn it over. That pass was not quite long enough, and you can credit the Nets for it. So Philadelphia goes on offense. Trying to take the lead again in what has been a seesaw affair, and no one has had a bigger lead than four thus far. Sixers had a four-point lead, and the Nets had a three-point lead moments ago. Foul is on Otis Birdsong away from the ball. And, and another thing about these guys is that Tony's a very physical player. When guys, after they get through playing him, they find they got a few sore spots on them from bumps and bruises because... Uh, he hurts you a little bit. Darwin Cook, who had a fine game Friday night, originally with Detroit, is a fourth-round draft choice, and the Nets can count their lucky stars. They have Cook, who can bail them out with so many changes in the guard situation, and he plays at both ends of the floor and a valuable performer. Andrew Tony hits the jump shot, the free throws, and the Sixers lead by one. So the Nets are over the limit in fouls. That was their fifth. The Sixers have committed just one. Now they got Darwin Cook coming off the bench. Good defensive play by Tony. I'll let you continue the thought after this foray by Julius Irving. He missed it. Malone. And it's tipped in and no basket. And he's a goaltending. I'm Veroni again. Veroni. again. Now, the point you were making. Is that uh, some guys you can get more production out of them coming off the bench. And some guys you can't. Now Darwin Cook is in the process of trying to adjust to coming off the bench. And this is something that... Uh, guys try real hard at it but it's not easy Williams against Ivoroni now off balance shot by Buck rebound Malone he gets the ball to the right people Billy Cunningham told us cheeks to Tony and a good defensive play by the Nets they got a piece of the ball and Mark Ivoroni fights for the second effort gets the bucket and is fouled here's Ivoroni who trained Ralph Sampson when Ivoroni left Virginia was a graduate assistant and showed how strong he can be inside well this is what he has to do because this is what I was talking about earlier is that they don't have very many plays for, for a kid like Ivoroni and he has to work the offensive boards now if he gets seven or eight points they're all bonuses because that's how he gets them working the boards Ivoroni the free throw caps the three-point play and the Sixers lead 21 17 and into the ball game and the next break will be Michael Corrin so Darwin Cook defended by Maurice Cheeks Reggie Johnson is coming to the ball game and we want to tell you about him Otis Birdsong with a jump shot and it's a 21 19 game Sixers with two big acquisitions to strengthen their bench one of them in the game Reggie Johnson this is Mo Cheeks, shot blocked by Jaminski. Good defensive play by Jaminski. Albert King will carry it inside and draw the foul. All right, let's tell you about Reggie Johnson, who was purchased from the Kansas City Kings. He's from Tennessee in his third year, and what he is doing is giving Philadelphia a scoring punch off the bench. Still learning the system, but that's something Philadelphia lacked before. 
Dixie Daredevils apologize. Out here on the coast, a lot of fun goes into the work we do. On the other hand, a lot of work goes into the fun we have. Best beer for the best time of the day, Miller High Life. Howard Spokes meet Bump 32, Route 16. Melvin Foster, Pothole 44, Route 12. Now small car owners meet the Monroe Gasmatics, the first gas-charged American-made shock designed to cushion small car bumps. They ride so good, Monroe will even replace them if they don't give you the best ride ever. And now, in Monroe's Bump Stops Here sweepstakes, you can win up to $10,000 and over 100 other prizes. See your participating retailer for details. The tales of torture coming out of Khomeini's Iran are almost too gruesome to believe, but you'll believe them when you hear them from the victims themselves, Sunday on CBS. In the NBA last night, Denver makes it seven in a row, beating a tough Milwaukee club. Cleveland, a half a game out of escaping the cellar, beating Dallas, a team that's having a fine year. Golden State over Utah. Joe Barry Carroll, much improved this year, 52 points, maybe one of the most improved in the league. And Seattle been struggling over Houston, 126 to 103. The New York Knickerbockers have been coming on. They beat the Boston Celtics, 105-98 in a big game. Los Angeles over Detroit after losing the night before. We'll have some highlights of those games coming up at halftime. Albert King misses the first free throw. He is the second leading scorer in his second year from Maryland. Coming off a career high, 31 points Friday against Chicago. Missed them both, so it's still 21-19. Clint Richardson is in the game for the 76ers, an important third guard for them that we'll tell you about. Reggie Johnson, number 33, out to Tony. Tony guarded by Darwin Cook, doing a good job on Andrew, who makes a good spin in to Moses Malone, and Malone is fouled. Clint Richardson is into the ball game. As we had mentioned, there's Mike O'Corin. Mike O'Corin in his third game since returning from a broken right hand. He was out for two months. And here's Moses working without the ball. Now, Jeminski is, is overmatched physically, but here's see Moses, when Jeminski went out to help, Moses stayed in the lane there because he stays around the uh, bucket as close as he can. And when the, the minute you take your hands off of him and leave him alone, he's on the ball. Malone has six points and five rebounds so far. Misses the first with 2.25 remaining in the first period. One of two for Mo, and it's 22 to 19 Philadelphia. Last time these teams played back on November 13th, so they're practically strangers, though they play in the same division. Baseline turnaround missed by Jaminski, and Richardson got it to Tony, and here comes Philadelphia's break. Tony inside, Ivoroni, and he's got it. Ivoroni seeing a lot of action, practically playing the entire first period. Biggest lead of the game for Philadelphia. Well, he has to get his, the first period, because he may or may not play very much in the second half, so uh, he, he has to go out there and get what he can. His first foul. Larry Brown talking about Billy Cunningham yesterday said it was the best player he ever coached this was at Carolina of the ABA when Brown was the coach and Cunningham was the player their careers almost coincided in North Carolina Brown was two years ahead of Billy as Bo Birdsong showing his outside shooting has six points in the game less than two minutes to go precisely 135 in the first period Sixers by three Malone, they quickly double him. That's a, doing a good job defensively. Clint Richardson banks it in. Clint Richardson for the Philadelphia matches their biggest lead now. You know, Philadelphia's added a couple of players, uh, and what they're trying to do is fine-tune this basketball machine. But you have to be careful when you're fine-tuning 
that it doesn't get if you go too far it becomes tinkering which I don't think they've done right Tony all the way feeds Ivoroni and a foul you know what I've noticed about Andrew Tony we all know that he has been a scoring machine but the fact is that he now when he came off the bench they wanted him to score a lot he still does but he's become a com more of a complete player passing a lot more and showing what he could do at all aspects of the game here's the other new player Clemen Johnson who's been a backup center and a power forward and an important acquisition you were talking about some of the new players well, you think, yeah, as, you, as your team goes through the season you see certain weaknesses and if you can get people that can close the gap on, in those areas without doing it too much like I said if you do it too much it becomes tinkering if you can fill it in and fine-tune it then you can play the versatile game that you have to play to be a champion you saw Len Elmore the nine-year veteran from Maryland come in replacing Jaminski so Dawkins has not come back after committing two personal fouls early 50 seconds to go in the first period Elmore hits the shot one of three Maryland players on this team still the all-time leading rebounder for the Terrapins and it's a 28-23 game five-point lead now cut to three as Andrew Tony has ten points two assists and two rebounds in this first period So a seven-point lead for Philadelphia. Once again, matches their biggest lead and foul against Philadelphia is Clint Richardson. And now Philadelphia's fifth team foul, and they're now over the limit. Clint was beating up on him a little bit. Otis Birdsong really has had a problem at the free throw line. He is shooting at just about 50%, which is not a good percent from the line. And as Jan Van Bredekoff comes into the ball game, a veteran who's a good passer and a defensive player, Birdsong really has developed a problem at the line. Well, you know, he went through a series of illnesses and injuries, and he lost confidence in his, in his game. And because he's a fine, fine player, and he's just starting to get it back. And this is one of the things that, uh, that's troubling. It's a, it's a sore spot for him in that it just, you just can't make it work at the time. Foots Walker, the oldest player on the Nets at age 31, the nine-year star who played with Cleveland for six years, is in the ball game. We're going to tell you who's in the game. We've had a lot of substitutions. No, no one's going to believe us now that Birdsong has had problems at the free throw line. Traveling against Tony, who thinks Walker fouled him, and the Nets are going to have the ball with a six-point deficit and 14 seconds to try to make it four before this period is over. Albert King has come back. Well, one of the things you have to know now, as I, we said earlier, that the, the Nets have the fifth best record in the league. And all the teams with the good records play good defense. Butch Walker working against Clinton Richardson. Len Elmore trapped by Clemen Johnson. And a foul is called. Foul is on Clemen Johnson out there for the Nets. Elmore, who will go to the line. Darwin Cook, Foots Walker, Michael Corrin, and Jan Van Bredekoff for the 76ers, Clement Johnson and Reggie Johnson. Tony Richardson and Ivoroni, who's played this entire first period. So Elmore shooting two. Four seconds remaining. Elmore played a big role last year on this net team. Influencing a team with two rookie forwards and King and Williams. Played his best ball. Started with the ABA with Indiana. Then went to Kansas City and Milwaukee in the NBA after Indiana joined the NBA. He had knee problems, real bad knee problems early in his career. 30 to 26, four seconds to go. Tony doesn't have much time and loses the ball out of bounds. And the Nets have two seconds to work something. Eight turnovers by Philadelphia. And that may not be surprising when you consider the Nets lead the league in forcing turnovers. They can come within two. Elmore, alley -oop to Albert King. And that's the end of the period. And a good period of basketball. They're competitive. The Nets are staying with them pretty good. It's been a tight game. And Philadelphia has the four-point edge at the end of the first. While America has been struggling with a new set of automotive values, 
These two cars have logged over 21 billion happy front-wheel drive miles. They're simple, rugged vehicles, easy to service, fun to drive. The resale value has been solid, and they're backed by a 550 protection plan. These cars are Dodges, Dodge Omni, Dodge Aries K. We at Dodge thought that as America enters the age of front-wheel drive efficiency, you should know where it all started. Get up to $1,000 back on new Dodge cars and trucks or 11.9 financing. Participating dealers have details. When you pinged your first Pong, you were being prepared for something. When you downed your first Martian, when you ate your first power pill, you were being prepared for something far greater. Because those game machines were early versions of computers. And what you were being prepared for was a real version of a computer, the Commodore VIC-20. Games like you've never seen before, but more important, true computing. Commodore VIC-20, a real computer for the price of a toy. Next weekend on CBS Sports, Saturday, a look back and a look ahead as they begin the road to the national championship. Then tournament bids are at stake in the finals of the PCAA and Missouri Valley Championships. On CBS Sports Saturday and Sunday, cliff diving from Acapulco and America's hopes for the crowns at the World Figure Skating Championships. Sunday, the college action continues with the Metro Conference Finals and the SEC and the Big 8 titles are on the line. A championship weekend here on CBS Sports. I try to raise the score as high as I can because in this game, the highest score wins. However, this is one place where a high score could make you a loser, your blood pressure. I'm Marcus Johnson for the American Heart Association. Did you know that high blood pressure was a major risk factor in both stroke and heart attack? Get your blood pressure checked regularly, and if it's high, then follow your doctor's advice. We don't want you to become a loser. The preceding message has been furnished as a public service by the National Basketball Association. Philadelphia last year had problems off the boards, but right now they're the leading rebounding team in the NBA, and the Nets knew that they'd have a chance against Philadelphia off the boards. Moses Malone getting a chance to get a breather, and that's because of the acquisition of Clemen Johnson, who moves into the center position. Clemen Johnson, who was acquired in a trade from Indiana for Rush Shaney in a draft choice this year and next year. So we start the second period. Dick Stockton along with Bill Russell. 30 to 26, Philadelphia in front. Darwin Cook and Foots Walker in the backcourt. Mike O'Corin getting back into action. Walker, number 14, takes too many steps. Well, they were side steps. Buck Williams has three rebounds and King and Jaminski two each. The leaders for the Nets, who had a three-point lead, but Philadelphia's biggest margin was seven. Moses Malone on the bench, five boards. Intercepted by Eddie Phillips, the only rookie on the team, who then commits a double dribble and gives the ball back to Philadelphia. So the New Jersey Nets, who create the most turnovers and forces the most, also commit the most. And right now, Philadelphia has committed nine, Nets seven, and there's another turnover by the Nets. Going is Michael Corr into the hoop nicely. Third year from North Carolina and the former number one draft pick. And one of the reasons I think that watching the Nets play that they have so many turnovers is they're still getting to know the speed and the timing of the other players. And and that's so important in not making turnovers because you got to pass the ball where guys can use it. And there's Franklin Edwards hitting outside. We're seeing everyone as both coaches going to their benches extensively. That was Franklin Edwards, who was a number one draft pick last year for Philadelphia and a prolific scorer at Cleveland State, where he starred at college. 32 to 28, Sixers lead is four. Missing outside was Cook. Richardson coming back in the lane. Double team Edwards. Edwards, look at that first step. Missed the shot, but showed terrific acceleration. Richardson anticipates the pass for a steal, and he's fouled by Lynn Elmore. Richardson will go to the line. That's Clint Richardson. There's one on each side. Elmore's first. And Elmore did something that, show, that indicates he's a veteran. He threw the ball away, and he tried to draw the offensive foul rather than block the shot. But most guys, will, especially when they're young, if they make a mistake, they'll try to make up for it by making a steal or a block. Clint Richardson with the free throw. He proved his value as the third guard in the playoffs last year. Really came of age. He's a personable player and a spark plug on defense. And a worrier. 
Five point lead for Philadelphia. Good feed, Phillips, but it was Foots Walker who really rifled the pass into Eddie Phillips from Alabama. The Nets' only first year player on the roster now. Philadelphia by three. It's been a tight game. Biggest lead, seven by Philadelphia. Teams are staying close. And Darwin Cook staying close to Clint Richardson. Elmore, pass was hit Elmore, and O'Corin gets an easy two. That's just one of those bad breaks, Russ. So the Nets trail by one. We've had three lead changes in the game and four ties. And we have a net foul. It's on Foots Walker. First foul on Foots. Both these teams are playing strong defense, but very physical defense. They're uh, run running into each other pretty good. They're, they're getting to know each other quite well because they're, they're hitting each other pretty good. And the referees are letting them play. That's a good point. Fleming Johnson. Edwards, Irving, and Clement Johnson fighting inside. Second effort. Look at that. That's what Philadelphia wanted. I think he says uh, enough of this little uh, missing the little layups. I think I'll uh, shoot the percentage shot here. Julius Irving said Clement is a little like Moses. He bangs, gets the rebound, scores. A lot of teams coveted Clement Johnson, 6'10 from Florida A&M, and we'll have a Philadelphia foul at the other end. 9-10 remaining in the second period. Uh, here's uh, Clement Johnson underneath there. He says, well, he misses that one, gets it back, and says, okay, now this is the way you do it. You don't miss those. That's why Philadelphia wanted Clement Johnson, who was originally drafted by Portland, went to Indiana, and was the second leading rebounder on the Indiana team last year, coming off the bench next to Herb Williams. So Philadelphia has helped their bench, and that's been obvious. We'll be back. If you've got what it takes and really care, there's a special kind of life you'll want to share. Serving your country is a special call. It's good for you. It's good for all. Not all who drive fit the bill. It calls for brains. It calls for skill in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. High tech and the services go hand in hand. A whole new world. You're in demand in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. You'll move up. You'll feel proud. You'll stand out above the crowd in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. But most of all, you'll earn the respect of the people and country you're there to protect in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. It's a great place to start. The best beer for the best time of the day, Miller High Life. Only Old Spice gives you two fisted protection with original Old Spice deodorant and super dry antiperspirant. Both have that famous Old Spice scent. So what's the difference? Old Spice deodorant helps knock out odor. And Old Spice antiperspirant fights odor while it helps wipe out wetness. And they both work overtime. Old Spice, one name that gives you two-fisted protection. Coming up at halftime, you'll see the highlights of the Knicks upset of the Celtics last night and the Lakers' victory over Detroit. Brent Musburger will have NBA Commissioner Larry O'Brien live in the studio, a special report on the story of the NBA strike, which has been a cloud hanging over professional basketball in the last couple of weeks. And we'll get the story from Brent from our studios across the river coming up at halftime. Darwin Cook will go on the line. We talked about how Philadelphia's bench has been improved. The Nets have outscored the Sixers bench, 13-7. to But New Jersey went with Dawkins in early foul trouble to Jaminski and Elmore. And so far, they haven't been hurt by that. Darwin misses the first. They've been helped. Yes. And this is a, a, a Darwin Cook, as, as I said earlier, struggling with coming off of the bench. And you know, you saw the graphic about how well they played when he has started, 29 and 9. He prefers to start, as you mentioned earlier, has to adjust to coming off the bench. He can play both guard positions, but is probably better as an off guard or shooting guard than he is as a playmaker. 
Clint Richardson going up for the jump shot is short. And there is Clement Johnson with the rebound and the basket good. So Clement Johnson, who said he went from the outhouse to the White House. That's what Clement said when he was traded from Indiana to Philadelphia. And I don't think the people of Indiana appreciate that, but maybe they'll understand going to a team of this caliber. Inside to Eddie Phillips over Reggie Johnson. And Jaminski fighting well. Keeps it alive and it goes through. And it was Eddie Phillips who gets credit. Let's check and see who gets the bucket. 8.25 remaining in the first half. They're going to give it to Jaminski. So it was Jaminski. With good persistence in the offensive area. Julius misses the shot. Darwin Cook gets it out on the break to O'Corin. And Reggie Johnson almost made a good defensive play but lost it off of him. And both these teams have been getting back defensively quite well. The transition from offense to defense because if you have a good offense that keeps most of the players in motion you can get back on defense. It's very important that you don't stand around offensively. Good shooting on both sides. Walker's shot drops. Jaminski by the way has gone to the bench. He has scored five points and has been tough off the boards and Elmore has come in. Dawkins has not come back since the early moment. What Fritz Walker has been doing is in order to try to stop the fast break and he's been challenging the inbound pass to keep the Sixers from running on on a made basket. That was Franklin Edwards on the drive. Now the Nets have the ball. 39-36, Philadelphia leading by three. They've been maintaining that small lead. Darwin Cook ball knocked away by Edwards. And Reggie Johnson has it, loses it to Cook. Elmore, Elmore again, and a foul. I think the New Jersey Nets are playing a terrific game off of both boards, particularly the offensive class. And speaking of boards, here comes uh, Moses Malone back in the game. The chairman, as we say. <laughs> Larry Brown, who says he's teaching more now than he did when he coached UCLA. A lot of individual instruction. He's got that young team, as we've talked about. Well, you know, uh, talking to Larry Brown, talking about teaching, sometimes it may take two years before you can benefit from the, the teaching you do every day. Dawkins has come back in the game. Ball slapped away by Malone. Dawkins, second effort. Now, if Dawkins can get in the flow of this game, just as he was with Philadelphia, if he plays well, he has an immense influence on the game. Julius Irving sits down. And we're going to have a timeout. Let's see if Julius remains in the game. We have a timeout. And the Nets have come within one point with 7.05 remaining in the first half. Philadelphia had maintained the lead, but they can't shake the Nets. You're right. They're a good team. We'd like to give you a quick demonstration of the IBM Display Writer Office System. It lets you type, edit, and file electronically. It points out misspelled words and the correct alternatives. It can be used as a computer, and it can send information to whoever needs it. The IBM Display Writer helps you get your job done so quickly, it helps you look good. As a business traveler, I know what you want when you rent a car. You want your reservations honored, fast, friendly service, and no hassles. Clean and safe cars, that's what you deserve. That's what you get from Avis. I'm David Mahoney, chairman of Avis. If you ever have a problem with Avis, call this special toll-free number. You'll get a straight answer, and you'll get action. I'll see to it. That's trying harder. That's what makes Avis second to none. Confidence. We install it at Sears. Confidence? You're looking at it. I can replace your old muffler with a Sears muzzler for only $19.99 plus labor, warranted for as long as you own the car. If it fails, we'll replace it free. Want confidence in your brakes? I've been installing it for years. We'll give you a two-wheel brake job for only $79.99 with a 25,000-mile warranty on brake linings. At Sears Tire and Auto Centers, we install confidence day and night. Sears. Next, college basketball with independent tournament selections and a premium. Hank Raymond's guides Marquette against Ray Myers DePaul here on the home of the NCAA championship, CBS Sports. That's coming up next to the Midwestern rivals, Marquette, Hank Raymond's, DePaul, Ray Meyer. They're fighting one of these teams could get an NCAA berth. And don't forget, CBS 
is your network of the NCAA championships, the great tournament in the month of March. You know, when I was in college, I played against one of, uh, played against DePaul, and they were good then. And, they, and Ray Myers is still coaching there. He was coaching, he was a kid then, though. <laughs> well, he's a kid at heart now. DePaul Marquette will follow our game. Under seven minutes to go in the first half, Foots Walker and Cook have played a lot at guard. Mike O'Corin and Cook is wide open, shooting over cheeks, and it's off Malone and Walker fighting. And guess what? The Nets have the ball. Malone doesn't usually lose those kind of skirmishes. <laughs> he didn't want to hurt Walker, I think. He says, oh, there's a little guy there. I don't want to hurt him. <laughs> the Nets have five offensive rebounds in five minutes of this period. So they really worked to get themselves second shots and third shots. That ball went right through the hands of Darwin Cook. O'Corns passed a little bit too hard. So Philadelphia, with a one-point lead, has the ball. Cheeks and Franklin Edwards in the backcourt. Clement Johnson and Moses Malone. Let's see who's playing center and who's playing power forward because Cunningham has used Malone as a power forward a lot when Clemens been in the game. In the game, Otis Birdsong and Michael Ray Richardson, the starting guard tandem replaces Cook and Walker, and they played well off the bench. Well, that says something about Clement Johnson's outside shooting. If, uh, if Moses is going to play forward, that means he's the best outside shooter. Well, that's a nice left-handed compliment. <laughs> They're both inside. Irving's shot is blocked. Dawkins blocked it, and Maurice Cheeks misses, and Julius Irving inside. And O'Corin comes down with it, and the Nets can take a lead here. And going in is Williams. And the Nets have the lead, 40 to 39. The Nets are playing fine team defense. And I think Julius is limping a little bit. I don't know what he hurt, but I think he hurt. Uh, they got an illegal defense they just called. But I think he might have hurt his foot a little bit. Let's see if we can see what happened with Julius. That's a blocked shot by uh, right there. Eric when he went out there and he hurt something. And as you mentioned, an illegal defense has been called against the Nets. That's a warning. Next time it's a technical foul. Julius Irving. Goes to the bench. Mark Ivaroni comes back in. Ivaroni, who started it forward. Cheeks lost the ball out of bounds. The Nets really play well off the ball. There's Ivaroni. Converge on the ball. Larry Brown has taught them an effective team defense. And we're going to have a foul on Michael Ray Richardson. A loose ball foul. He got cares with the ball, and Cheeks uh, had taken it away from him, and he pushed him out of the way, I think. Michael Ray, not 100%, has that ear infection, also a stomach virus. Michael Ray started the year with the Knicks, went to the Golden State Warriors. If he can, he can help this club if he can stay in control. He's been out of control a lot, has caused a little bit of problems with some of the teams he's played on. Saving it is Clemen Johnson. Trying to get it back, good play by Buck Williams to Michael Ray. Michael Ray Richardson, and the net lead is three. Michael Ray Richardson, one of seven players in double figures for the Nets. Seven in a row for New Jersey, under five minutes to go in the first half. Dick Stockton and Bill Russell from the Meadowlands in East Rutherford. Goaltending called against Dawkins and give Franklin Edwards two points. Now, they call goaltending, but that was a good move by Dawkins because... Might make the guy make the guy think the next time he comes in there. Now, if Dawkins can stay out of foul trouble now, he he uh, is a physical match for Moses. Buck Williams taking the shot, not a good one. Gets the offensive board against Malone and scores. Boy, Buck Williams battled Moses Malone for that offensive rebound. But the reason he, he's able to do that is that Daryl Dawkins keeps Moses busy. And that he's, a, like I said, a physical match for him. And that leaves you the uh, buck against the other guys. And he's a better rebound than the other guys. Malone, Clemen Johnson, and a foul. Keep in mind now, and we'll remind you again, that the Philadelphia 76ers have not lost two in a row at any time this year. No club has gone through an NBA season without losing at least two in a row. It is a tremendous achievement. And the Sixers, who lost to Boston Friday, must avoid defeat today. Right now, they're trailing by three. And seeing in fine-tuning a ball club by changing personnel, 
one of the things you have to remember is that certain players' style help other players play. And, and for example, Daryl Dawkins has helped Buck Williams because he's of such a physical presence in that you have to screen him out, although he's not what you call an outstanding rebounder. But he does uh, create a presence there that you have to contend with, and that leaves Buck against the other guys in a lot of cases. This makes him a better rebounder. Good point. He is a presence on the floor. He's a physical presence, and that counts for something. Four minutes to go in the first half. Ten different nets have entered the scoring column. Both clubs going to their benches. The Nets by one into Darrell Dawkins. The finger roll works, and Dawkins. Six points in the game, the leading scorer. Buck Williams for the Nets with eight. Andrew Tony has ten for Philadelphia. Franklin Edwards and Ivoroni. Banks it in. New Jersey by one. An injured left knee is what we understand for Julius Irving. They're going to check it at halftime. We'll keep you posted. The heart and soul of the Sixers is the doctor. Franklin Edwards pulls up. This is the shot bird saw. The Nets by one, 46-45. Biggest lead in the game, Philadelphia by seven. Birdsong doesn't go. And here comes Philadelphia. Three on one. Dawkins is back, and Edwards will get the bucket. Boy, Edwards has really improved this year. You can see a much more poised player. Well, one of the advantages he had, he might have thought of a disadvantage, was playing with Philadelphia, is that he didn't have to, as a rookie, come out there and perform. It's like being a freshman in college. He had a chance to sit and watch and learn the game. Edwards uh, committed the foul after the basket, but he has eight points on four field goals. Nip and tuck, Philadelphia now leading by one, 259 remaining in the first half. Sat down with mom, talked to dad, can't get it together, makes you feel sad. You know you can do it, you wonder where. You want it soon, because you really care. The services can help you so you not only get better, you really grow. Talking Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. You'll work hard, they'll make you a man. Responsibility is part of the plan in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. Prove you can make it, prove it to all. Serving your country and walking tall in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. You've got it together, they'll see in a glance. Thanks to the services, you've got the chance in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. It's a great place to start. In 1936, Isuzu set out to build gas and diesel trucks that were tough enough for the roughest roads in the world. Tough enough to withstand the bitter cold of Korea. Tough enough to endure the sizzling heat of Haiti. For over 46 years, the name Isuzu has stood for toughness. Isuzu trucks, tougher than the world's toughest roads. Hey, chicken and ribs? Chicken and ribs. Steak? Yeah. Chili? Homemade chili. Good work. Wait a minute. What did you bring besides your list? Just a little something I threw together. I should have known. When you want the taste of a truly great beer, tonight, let it be low. Okay, everybody, let's go win this one. Not every arena is equipped with luxury boxes like these, but they have them at the Burn Meadowlands Arena. Sellout crowd of over 20,000. Dick Stockton and Bill Russell here as the 76ers are leading the Nets 47 to 46. Philadelphia with a record of 50 and 8, looking for 70 wins, would be the most victories in the history of the NBA in the regular season. The Nets 22 games better than their mark of two years ago, an improved club. And Philadelphia with the question mark there, and Julius Irving, who has an injured left knee, will be checked at halftime. And you know, coming to this game, I don't know how serious the injury is with, with Julius, but their four stars have been remarkably injury-free. Good point. And will amplify as King hits the jump shot. Albert King now has six points. That's a very good point. Doc has missed seven games in four years. Malone, three. Cheeks, seven. Tony, after an early injury, hasn't missed that much. Good defensive play by Dale Dawkins. So Dawkins picked up two fouls early, making his presence felt. And we'll have a foul inside, and they try the alley-oop to Moses Malone. Well, he wasn't uh, paying attention after he made that play. I think he was thinking about what a good play he made and then uh, didn't get ready for the next one. Albert King, his second personal foul. No one in any foul trouble so far in the game. No one has committed more than two personal. 
Here's Malone. Averaging 24 and a half points a game. Sixth in the NBA in scoring. The leading rebounder. The MVP last year in his seventh year. He went from high school to the pros. Petersburg High School in Virginia to the NBA. And Darryl Dawkins also went from high school right to the pro ranks. 2.19 to go. First half. Sixers by one. Even game all the way. Buck Williams. Again hits the outside shot. And the Nets regain the lead. Buck Williams reminds me a little bit of the kind of progress that John Havlicek made in that when he came to, to the Celtics, he was not a good shooter, and he taught himself to shoot. Less than two minutes to go in the first half. Dawkins in a crowd gives it to King, who goes up and is fouled. You were talking about Buck Williams. And you can see the progress, and of course you were with John. Buck is five for six, and you can see similarities? Yes, because he's a great athlete to start with. And not necessarily a, what they call a pure shooter. He's teaching himself how to shoot that 12 to 15 foot jump shot. And this makes him such a, such a threat that it makes it easier for him to, to learn to drive. And so he, in a period of two or three years, he becomes a complete ball player. But he still is going to have to learn to talk. <laughs> well, maybe you ought to... You ought to talk to him about that. Tony committed the foul, his second. And Albert King hits both free throws. 142 remaining in the first half. And one of the closer games we have seen from wire to wire. Irving back in the ball game to test the knee, and it looks good on that one. Tony I, say, I think his knee feels all right. I know his hands are good. <laughs> New Jersey lead. Now one point, 52 to 51. 125 to go. Tony with 10. Ivoroni and Malone 9 for Philadelphia. Michael Ray goes in and that drops for him. He has 8 points. Buck Williams with 10 leads New Jersey. Cheeks is in there and Tony, Malone, Clement Johnson and Julius Irving. Really the best 5 that Philadelphia has right now even though Clement Johnson didn't start. Boxing out well. Buck Williams and New Jersey. Trying to open up a five-point lead, which would be their biggest lead of the game. Buck Williams. They got it. Seven rebounds for Buck. He's the highest scorer for the Nets with 12, and they have the biggest lead they've had since the start of this game. 56-51. 35 seconds to go in the half. Ten seconds on the shot clock, and Bursong steals it from Tony. are finishing with a flourish to the delight of 21,000 fans. An official timeout. Because it's not outstanding shooting today, but both these teams are playing good defense, and you're talking about all the way through the lineup. You're not just talking about your starters, but all the guys out there. And this, that's why these teams have the kind of records they have, is that you have good defense throughout the lineup. All right, hey, let the clock run down and then be ready to take a foul. You got Moses, you got Clements, hey, you got Julius. Hey, keep him off the board. If there's an opportunity, just run. Go after the ball. Yeah. No, no, I'm sorry. No foul. No foul. No foul. I don't think so. Am I a hell of a coach? Larry Brown smiling for the first time in the game. Philadelphia led 48-47 before the Nets put on a spurt and have outscored the Sixers 
The Jersey Nets have 11 to 3. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, you'll get the strike story, the latest from Larry O'Brien, live with Brent in the studio. Larry Fleischer, I believe, is on tape, the Players Association head, plus NBA highlights of last night's Celtic Nick upset and the Lakers in Detroit. Ten seconds, seven on the shot clock. And here's Franklin Edwards, who go out for the jump shot, and the Nets with three seconds to go. And this shot, if it goes, will count. Doesn't, but the fans have to like what they've seen. That ends the first half. The Nets lead 58 to 51. Brent across the river on the other side of our commercial. Years ago, luxury cars began a tradition that persists to this day. And what does this do? Why, nothing. You see, it's a symbol. Thus was born the luxury car's preoccupation with prestige, a notion rejected by the BMW 733i. We place extraordinary engineering before self-congratulation. That's why our status symbol is under the hood, not on it. When I warm up for a game, I use Ben Gay. Professionals like Larry Bird use Ben Gay not only after exercise, but to help warm up before. Does Ben Gay really help? A recent clinical study proved that people using Ben Gay during warm up ran more comfortably for a longer time. For years, Ben Gay has relieved soreness after exercise. Now there's proof Ben Gay can help you warm up before. Ben Gay after and Ben Gay before. Feel better with Ben Gay. Covering Jerry Pate is a super opportunity for a photographer. If I win this tournament, I'm going to make you famous. I counted on my Canon AE-1 program with all the features a pro wants to capture all the sides of Pate's game. Oh my God. Oh my God. Now it's your turn. I told you I was going to make you famous. The AE-1 program makes the toughest shot simple. The Canon AE-1 program, so advanced, it's simple. Canon, the photographic consultant to the National Basketball Association. I do one thing, magic, and the secret to being the best is concentrating on one thing, like Kentucky Fried Chicken. They concentrate on making chicken taste magical. I don't know what their secret is, but I know it's something only Kentucky Fried Chicken can do. They make the chicken appear, and we make it disappear. Kentucky Fried Chicken, we do chicken right. Welcome back to the News Desk here in New York. I'm Brent Musburger, and of course, Buck Williams now has led the Nets to a lead at halftime. He has poured in 12 points for the Nets. Last night in Madison Square Garden, the New York Knicks again demonstrated that they are slowly coming to life under Hubie Brown. 105-98 over the Boston Celtics, who are coming off that enormous victory over the 76ers up in the Boston Garden. But Bill Fitch was not a happy coach last night. And we'll show you some of the reasons why. Bernard King picks Tiny Archibald clean, comes inside of Larry Bird for two points. King had 24. Watch this pass by Paul Westfall. He's been the key to the Nick resurgence, and much of it is not his marvelous shooting ability that he'll show you right here, but he also has been passing the ball off more than ever before. And the Knicks down the Celtics before almost 18,000 in Madison Square Garden, 105 to 98. Now, the incredible season that the 76ers are putting together and all the other team and individual efforts this season may go by the boards if the NBA players go out on strike. April 2nd is the strike date. They are now threatening to go out if negotiations continue to stall. And joining me live here is NBA Commissioner Larry O'Brien. And Commissioner, let's first review the issues that are at stake in this dispute between management and the NBA Players Association. As a result of a 1976 court decision, NBA players now have unrestricted free agency. A player like Scott Wedman, who sits on the Celtic bench, earns $700,000 a year. The owners claim that the league's 23 teams lost a combined total of $39 million last year. The Players Association puts the loss at only $15 million. We have found that the reason a number of league teams are losing money has absolutely nothing to do with the salary structure of the league. It has to do with their own incompetence, it has to do with their own location of franchises, mismanagement, and undercapitalization. 
To end their financial problems, the owners proposed to the players that league revenues be divided up equally by the 23 teams, and that each team could spend up to 50% of its share of the revenue on salaries. What do the players want? They would like to maintain the status quo until 1987. That's when the 76 court decision expires. Only then would the players accept a plan similar to the owner's proposal. The owner's response, waiting until 1987 to implement their proposal, would result in franchises folding and jobs lost. We are not willing to bring down to the lowest common denominator the rest of the players in order to protect 20 or 24 jobs. You must remember that a year ago, we got an extra 23 jobs by increasing the roster size from 11 to 12. Both sides agree that a revenue sharing agreement is vital, but why the four-year difference in starting dates? Money. Potential free agents such as Larry Bird would lose under the owner's plan. Teams that have already spent 50% of their revenue on salaries would not be able to bid for free agent. And with fewer bidders for his services, Larry Bird's market price would plummet. The players have set April 2nd as a strike deadline. I enjoyed the game so much, and uh, it would just kill me to strike, but, you know, you had to do what we had to do. I wouldn't like to see a strike. Um, I would hope that uh, sides could reasonably sit down and uh, agree on something to keep playing basketball. I'm not really sure of the complete basis of both sides, but if the majority of the players say we have to go on strike, then I'll go on strike. I wish it could be resolved before we strike because they had a baseball strike, a football strike. I figure we should have all learned something from that. Commissioner, in the baseball strike, Bowie Kuhn stayed out of direct negotiations. In the football strike, Pete Rozelle was nowhere to be seen. You have played a much more active role. Is there a reason for that? I believe that's my responsibility. Uh, this uh, concept that has been brought into uh, being here and is being negotiated is very unique, far-reaching. It would go to the ultimate stability of the league, and I think it's the role of the commissioner to be involved to ensure negotiations continue. And the record should be set straight, uh, Brent, uh, currently. The players in the NBA receive $246,000 a year as an average salary. In addition, each player receives $20,000 in benefits. Those benefits are in place as we sit here. They haven't been altered a bit, nor is there any intention of altering them as long as negotiations go on. I think that when Mr. Fleischer reviewed the financial state of the league and came to his own conclusion that there were 10 teams in the league in serious financial difficulty, the proper response is not the response he has made, and that is, let's call a strike. Commissioner, how many teams would have to go out of business? What are we talking about here? Three, four, five? Well, you can't really determine by number, but the fact of the matter is the strike is devastating to the league as a whole, and it's devastating to the owners and to the players. The owners, obviously, would lose substantial revenue. Those teams in difficulty would have greater difficulty continuing. The players, for example, they would lose salaries, benefits, the deferred compensation, and the rest. And almost 50% of the players in the league are paid on a 12-month basis. Both sides will lose tremendously. It would be a horrendous situation. There are no winners in a sports strike, Brent, and uh, that's my view. There are only losers. Are you optimistic or pessimistic? You have been face-to-face -face with Fleischer across the table. Well, face-to-face, -face, uh, Mr. Fleischer advised me of this strike on April 2nd, but by the same token, I received a letter from Mr. Fleischer just Friday. I have responded to that letter promptly. His recommendation is that we proceed with negotiations. His proposal is that negotiations continue. I think that's a constructive step, and the management uh, negotiating committee will be in touch with Mr. Fleisch in the morning to uh, set up a date. So probably back to the table sometime this week. Hopefully and privately. All right. Thank you very much, Thank you. And CBS Sports Sunday continues with more on the NBA after these messages from your local stations. Today on CBS Sports Sunday, live from Aspen, top to bottom coverage of the men's giant slalom with World Cup titles at stake, plus Leon Spinks and Carlos De Leon. Today, this is CBS. Time. When you ship air cargo, time is everything. That's why Flying Tigers delivers everything. Not just small packages. In fact, no matter what size your shipment is, we'll pick it up, fly it, and deliver it overnight, virtually anywhere in the country, on time. Or you don't pay. Small, medium, or large. Call Flying Tigers. It's on time, or it's on us. The facts are in. Subaru's got it all for 83. Here's the fast-breaking story. 
Subaru has just announced their 1983 models offer more horsepower than ever before. Their lightweight alloy engine will deliver all that extra power without sacrificing the high MPG rating Subaru is known for. And you can count on Subaru's durability and reliability, too. Get all the facts on the 83 Subaru lineup at your local Subaru dealer. You'll get a straight deal every time on sales and service. And that's a fact. This is not an ordinary muffler. It's an Everlast. Galvanized steel with tuning chambers that are calibrated by computers for sound control. And every Everlast muffler meets strict noise quality standards. There's only one place you can get the Everlast. At Meineke Discount Mufflers. A good muffler at a very good price. Everlast. Come see me, your local man from Meineke. I'm an exhaust system specialist dealing in quality. And you love the price. Now from 1893 to 2695. Visit your local independently owned Meineke shop. Sex Offenders, Monday on Channel 2 News at 6. We are at halftime with New Jersey, leading Philadelphia 58-51. to Coming up next here on CBS Sports Sunday, our coverage of the NCAA basketball showdown continues. One of these two teams has a marvelous chance to make the field of 52. Marquette DePaul, let's go live now to Gary Bender and Billy Packer for a preview. Oh, look at those two handsome guys. Well, Brad, as you know, a week from today, the bids will go out. The 52-team field will be announced. Coming in here, Marquette and DePaul. If Marquette wins, can they get to the tournament? I still think they'd be on the fence, uh, Gary. I think in the case of DePaul, the losses that they suffered in the last week uh, would really hurt them. Now, DePaul, what are their prospects? They're 15 and 10 coming in here. I really think that Ray Meyer is looking at the NIT. I don't think that even with a win today, they could go ahead to the NCAA. The last seven days, South Carolina has really hurt these two ball clubs. They defeated Marquette by two, and then on Wednesday, they defeated DePaul. Do you think they're in the tourney field? I really do, Gary. I think that even uh, with Bill Foster's heart attack, their club has played solidly, and they've done well against the independents. In addition to that, they've beaten some good outside people like Purdue and Vanderbilt. These two teams will be meeting for the 56th time. That's back to the 1917-18 season. And we'll be bringing you to Paul Marquette following the 76ers and Nets. Now back to you, Brent. All right, Gary, and of course, after the basketball, we go out to Aspen Live for America's Downhill, and it has stopped snowing, and the race due to start soon. Perhaps it's even underway now. Let's go out to Tim Ryan and find out. Tim? Okay, Brent, yes, it has stopped snowing. We, we've even had some patches of blue here. The wind has come up. Hopefully it'll blow all these clouds away. They've had to reschedule the start until 12.30 Aspen time. That was from a, an originally slated 10 o'clock start. The volunteer workers have been real busy trying to get the hill ready to make it uh, uh, less dangerous for the downhill racers than it usually is anyway. And of course, uh, while it's a test for the racers, it'll be a test for us because as the last of the 60 racers comes down the hill, we will be less than an hour away from our scheduled videotape airtime. But we're looking forward to it. You will see America's downhill here today, along with top stars like American Phil Mayer going for his first World Cup downhill victory of the season. Of course, the downhill leader in the World Cup this year, Franz Klammer, and some of the favorites include Todd Brooker and Ken Reed of Canada and defending champion Peter Mueller. It it is windy at the top of the hill and getting colder, oddly enough, but uh, we expect that the conditions will be good enough for America's downhill to be coming up this afternoon on CBS Sports Sunday. And right now, let's take you back to Brent Musburger in New York. All right, Tim, our videotape operators here at CBS, they're up to that quick turnaround. They'll handle it for you all out there. And also live, we're going to go to Atlantic City. We have got a cruiserweight bout for you. Ten rounds. Leon Spinks and Carlos De Leon. Coming up next, of course, second half. Philadelphia and the New Jersey Nets, and we'll have that in just a moment. Howard Spokes meet Bump 32, Route 16. Melvin Foster, Pothole 44, Route 12. Now small car owners meet the Monroe Gasmatic, the first gas-charged American-made shop designed to cushion small car bumps. They ride so good, Monroe will even replace them if they don't give you the best ride ever. And now, in Monroe's Bump Stops Here sweepstakes, you can win up to $10,000 and over 100 other prizes. See your participating retailer for details. Mr. McEnroe, that's a very close shave. You must be joking! That ball was in! No, Mr. McEnroe, your shave, it's very close. Of course, I shave with Bic. You earn millions and shave with a 20-cent Bic? Look, 
Why pay more for fancy handles and tricky tops when I get lots of cloches with Bic? Advantage, back and roll. He's right. I don't have to shave with a 20 cent Bic. But I do. A motorcycle built just for yourself. A powerful V-twin. Liquid cooling. Shaft drive. A teardrop tank. And a radical set of pipes. Now, all you need is a name. The Shadow from Honda. As a graduate of UCLA, I know the value of a college education. That's why I'm happy that the NBA will be offering $50,000 in college scholarships to high school seniors this season. For further information, contact your NBA team or write NBA scholarships, 645 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York, 10022. 645 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York, 10022. You don't have to be a basketball player to qualify. The preceding message was furnished by the National Basketball Association. Here on CBS Sports, you've seen some of the greatest athletes in the world doing what they do best, running, leaping, flying, performing feats so amazing the eye can't comprehend the near impossibility of the execution. These are the athletes of the NBA. CBS Sports again brings you those special moments of emotion and athletic prowess covered by a production team more than equal to the task. An announcing team with Dick Stockton, skill knowledgeable, and a fan. Bill Russell, perhaps the greatest practitioner of basketball skill ever, whose knowledge of the game is legend. Together, they bring you the kind of matchups that set the groundwork for CBS sports coverage of the playoffs. And then the NBA championship. Emotion, competition, athletic skill that is extraordinary. This is the NBA on CBS Sports. 58 to 51, New Jersey leading Philadelphia with the best record in the league, looking for 70 wins. And of course, we'll be with you for the championship series and the playoffs as the drama builds in the NBA season. Bill Russell, we see New Jersey with a seven point lead so far. Is Philadelphia playing as well as they can? Uh, not really, uh, but they're playing well because you see, the, a team like Philadelphia that has such a great record, they don't just go out and run over everybody. They have hard fought games and they have two and three point ball games. And you have, they have to work at it all the time. And that's one of the things that um, a guy like Moses is so important in that he works at it all the time. It keeps you in the ball game. Now, this, the Nets have been doing what they have to do. They've been uh, very effective on the boards. That's been the key thing. And they played real good defense, and they've gotten back so that Philadelphia has not gotten a lot of fast, point, fast break points. And they're going to have to be careful second half because... Uh, they can't let Philadelphia gear up their running game if they're going to stay in it. All right, let's take a look at the important and key halftime statistics that we have for you, leading off with the rebounding story. And, of course, we knew the Nets could rebound well with Philadelphia. They have the edge 23-18, to 18, the leading rebounder, Buck Williams, with seven. Now, as far as turnovers are concerned, Larry Brown said we can't be in the minus column too much. Philadelphia has turned it over two more times than New Jersey. Field goal percentage, the Nets 55% to 45% for Philadelphia. Now, Irving, Malone, and Cheeks are 5 for 19. The Sixers will have to improve on that considerably. Free throws, very important. What has kept Philadelphia in the game, 13 of 15 from the line. An important thing is going to happen this second half is if Dawkins can play a little longer the third period than he did the first period. Because he creates some problems for Moses because he's one of the few guys in the league that's physically capable of challenging Moses. The Nets have the ball. Buck Williams with 12 points is the high score. Birdsong with nine. Richardson and King each with eight. Tony has 10. Ivoroni and Malone, nine in the game as Richardson, Michael Ray, misses it and will have a foul the other way. A loose ball foul against Daryl Dawkins. So Dawkins, you know, earlier you said he can't get into foul trouble, picked up two in a hurry, and now you said it again, and Dawkins has picked up his third personal foul. He was effective in the second period, make no mistake. That's just a give-and-go cheeks. Shot blocked inside, I believe, by Dawkins. And here comes Birdsong to King. Lost it out of bounds. Philadelphia Good defensive ball. play. Defensively and getting back by the Philadelphia team. Got a hand on the ball and made him miss the ball. Maurice, the cheeks. Maurice cheeks, number 10. Andrew Tony 22 in the backcourt. Malone, number 2. Irving, number 6. And Ivoroni, number 8, up front. Michael Ray Richardson on cheeks. 
Out to Tony, guarded by Birdsong, and they try alley-oop in the pass to Irving. Knocked away. Good defense again by the Knicks. Feeding. Nice pass, King, to Michael Ray Richardson. They passed the ball just left on that break. Good defense. They helped out on the weak side because uh, they tried to alley-oop it to uh, Julius and got good help from the weak side. And you have to do that on good, good team defense. Same five that started the game for the Nets in there, of course, as we said, with Richardson and Birdsong at the backcourt. Dawkins the center. Buck Williams and Albert King, the fine second-year forwards from Maryland. Wide open, Cheeks. Can't keep him open for long. Maurice Cheeks. Second basket. Game seesawed in the early going. No more than a four-point edge for either team until Philadelphia spurted to a 30-23 lead just before the end of the first. Then the Nets came back to finally go ahead by one. That was Michael Ray Richardson who has 12 points. The Nets scored six at the close of the second period to take that seven-point lead. And they're up by nine right now. Biggest of the game. Tony has not really gotten unleashed yet. He can score from anywhere. Feeds Ivoroni. And Billy Cunningham's not going to like that. That's usually a high percentage shot. Except when it doesn't go in. <laughs> Malone misses and the rebound is Buck Williams. Andrew Tony has made some nice passes to Ivoroni who's converted most of them. But now the Nets have the ball. Trying to take an 11 point lead. 9.40 remaining in the third period. Dick Stockton and Bill Russell reporting. Tipped in by Michael Ray Richardson, who has six points so far in this third period. I'd say that Philadelphia probably has the three best defensive guards as a combination in the league in Tony Cheeks and Richardson. And a legal defense now called illegal defense against defense violation against the Nets. New Jersey Nets. Don't forget, coming up, we'll have the Paul and Marquette College Basketball, CBS Sports Sunday, the America's Downhill from Aspen, De Leon and Spinks in a cruiserweight fight still to come. Well, moms and dads the world around give their kids the same old sound. Gotta go to school, be a big success. They wouldn't settle for anything less. Now they've learned whatever you seek, you'll help yourself to reach your peak in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. Need a trade? Looking for a skill. They have hundreds to fit the bill in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. Want more school? Don't have the bread. They'll help pay to get you ahead. Talking Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. Mom and dad, they'll want to shout. He's made it big, there's no doubt. Thanks, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. It's a great place to start. Nobody has to tell me to get on the stick. With the wide stick, I don't waste time or money. See, speed stick deodorant is so much wider than the other leading stick. Gives you effective protection in just a few strokes. And if you've been using an aerosol, look. You'd use up two three-ounce sprays and start a third before you'd use up one two-and-a-half-ounce speed stick. So don't waste time or money. Get the wide stick for value. Speed stick deodorant by Menon. In spite of backbreaking interest rates, unemployment, and recession, we've done what the experts said couldn't be done. We build a new Chrysler Corporation. We build it on high mileage and front wheel drive, on K cars and LeBarons, convertibles, luxury cars, sports cars. We build it on quality. That's why we back every new car we build for five years or 50,000 miles. Before you put your money down, think. You can go with Chrysler or you can go with somebody else and take your chances. As we move closer to the playoffs, if the season ended today in the Eastern Conference, here would be the six teams that would earn a spot with Philadelphia and Milwaukee avoiding the miniseries. You see the New York Knicks and Atlanta would get the final two berths. In the West, Los Angeles and San Antonio would get first round buys, avoid the miniseries. Phoenix, Portland, Seattle, and Red Hot Denver would make up the rest. A technical foul, of course, uh, with the second violation of an illegal defense against the Nets, and shooting it is Andrew Tony. Tony is the high scorer for Philadelphia now with 11 points with Mark Ivoroni and Moses Malone nine Julius Irving who's averaging over 22 points a game has scored but four in this game the leading scorer for the Nets Michael Ray Richardson with a spurt here in the third has 14 Buck Williams 12 Birdsong nine and King eight a lot of balance there they try the alley-oop to Julius Julius is double teamed by Richardson and Albert King and it's still Philadelphia ball New Jersey's defensing that alley-oop play very well. They're getting help on the weak side. 
And we'll see if Philadelphia will exploit that with uh, Maurice Cheeks is the guy that stops that. Richardson misses. Irving tries, and Ivoroni fights for the rebound, and they'll call it on King. When you talk about weak side, of course, that's the side away from the ball. So when you see a team set up on one side and they get defensive help from the other side, that's what we mean by weak side help. Right. Strong side is where the ball is. Weak side is away from the ball where you're out of the picture. <laughs> the weak side guys never get in the picture, but they end up making the basket, right? Or the good defensive play. Malone and Dawkins outside. 8.48 remaining in the third period. Richardson with 10 seconds on the shot clock, uses his body inside, misses. Below tips it out, three on one break, King in the middle, and it's Birdsong the trailer, blocked out of bounds by Julius Irving, who saved the basket. And that's the kind of defensive play he makes consistently. That's why I said he is developed one of the better defensive players in the game today, although he's known for his dunks and uh, his ball control. And his open court forays. Ten-point lead for the Nets. Still 10, and Richardson and Irving going after the loose ball. Richardson is listed at 6'3", and he can f fight inside, as Bill said, with the big guys. Was a forward at college at Seattle. Spark plug. Double team Malone. Richardson, and there's Clint Richardson. Exactly the kind of style that has helped Philadelphia and made him the third guard. An eight-point game, the Nets lead, nearing eight minutes to go in the third period. Ivoroni and Buck Williams slapping at each other inside, coming around Birdsong, and they worked the play well. They didn't get the basket. But the Nets are scrapping for the loose ball, and Buck Williams scores. The Nets are an opportunistic team this afternoon. He's doing the Moses what Moses usually does to everybody else. And we'll have a block foul against Birdsong. And for the Nets, it is their third team foul. The Sixers have not picked up a team foul yet in this third period. Billy Cunningham, the kangaroo kid, jump center at North Carolina, Larry Brown told us yesterday, and lost only one jump all in his career. He was 6'4 and a half. 6'4 and a half, and he lost it to Cotton Nash of Kentucky, who was 6'5. Julius really defended well by Dawkins. Six seconds on the shot clock. Ivoroni looking for help. Malone, foul. But you cannot fault the Nets' defense. They are really put a blanket on Philadelphia all over the court. Malone will go to the line and shoot, but the Nets are playing like a team possessed defensively. They're working hard at it, uh, but you can stop Moses just so long, and then uh, he gets through. Coming into the ball game. Mike Jeminski, who played well in the first half when Dawkins got into early foul trouble. Malone, and you say you can only stop him so far. He's two for nine from the field and has not had a basket since the first period. And he's not obviously playing his best game. He misses both free throws. Ten-point lead for the Nets. They have the ball. Richardson working on Richardson. Michael Ray on Clint. Buck Williams lost possession. He just lost control, but he fought Moses inside. Malone got hit in the eye. I think Malone got hit in the eye. Blocks Jaminski's shot, and it's going to go over to Philadelphia. But Moses Malone, I think, was hit in the eye and needs some help. And we're going to have a timeout. Let's see if it's 20 seconds. I think it's a full timeout. Let's see where now Moses might The play here. Let's see if we can see what happened. Uh, there is where he got hit with the when Buck uh, uh, lost control of the ball, his hand hit Moses in the eye. Hey, Moses, who normally gives out the beating, getting one himself. Ten point lead for the Nets. Look what we've done with Ramada. We're filled with things that are new. Now we're classy, stylish, a special place, a delightful escape for you. Ramada. We've got a new world for you, and still Christ right. Look what we've done with Ramada. Ramada, we've got a new world for you. Here's to good friends. Tonight is kind of special. The Congratulations, your coach is a pretty mean game. Well, I had a pretty good teacher. Did I teach you the part about the winning coach buying the loan, Brown? You got it. Give me 10 minutes. I've got to go yell at my players. When you want the taste of a truly great beer, tonight, let it be low and brow. So tell me, 
What'd you say to your teacher? Told him we were out coached. Valvoline introduces the do-it-yourself dozen. 12 quarts of quality Valvoline motor oil in one convenient case. More than enough for two complete changes. Ideal for the two-car family. Valvoline's formulated to help prevent oil breakdown and heat buildup. Even in today's high revving engines. It pays to do it yourself with Valvoline, doesn't it? America's Elaine Zayak defends her crown in the World Figure Skating Championships. Next weekend on CBS Sports. After this game, I'll be on my way to Helsinki, Finland. Very proud that CBS Sports will cover the World Figure Skating Championships, which you will see next weekend. And the greatest skaters in the world. Elaine Zayak trying to defend her title. Rosalind Sumners, who won the U.S. Championship, would like to prevent that. Scotty Hamilton. Try to win his third in a row, and I think the Americans have their best skating team, so to speak, in dance, ice dancing and pairs that they've had in a long time coming up next weekend. Malone remains in the game despite getting hit in the eye. That's lead by 10. You know, Dick, in a, lot, a lot of times under the basket, a guy picks the ball up and make a point, make a two-point, and everybody says garbage. You only call it garbage if you haven't been under there. <laughs> <laughs> you would know. Almost... Richardson almost leads, uh, knocking the ball away. He leads the NBA in steals. Clint Richardson with the bucket. That's about rebounded the Sixers 31 to 22 off the board. Eight point game. Richardson, Michael Ray leads in steals, 10th in assists in the league. Jaminski, number 42, the center. King, the small forward, and Buck Williams, the big forward. Turnaround by King in the lane. If Albert King is on, boy, he can really blister. If he's off, he could be slumping. He has 10 points in the game and has just kept them in there. Four for seven defense, from the field. Too. You're right. Out of bounds, and they're going over to the Nets. That was good defense on, uh, on Albert King on that last play. He still got the hoop. We're going to see Franklin Edwards come in in a moment. Clint one, Richardson on Michael Ray. And one thing the Nets have been able to accomplish today is make the Philadelphia Sixers play a half-court game. And that's what I thought they would have to do to stay in the game, is make them play half-court and not get into a running game with them. All three centers, and that was Jaminski, have contributed to the Nets' cause today. A 12-point lead, 70-58. to 58. Moses Malone getting a little warmed up. We're live at the Burn Meadowlands Arena in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Dick Stockton and Bill Russell as we bring you the 76ers with a record of 50 and 8 trying to become the first team ever to win 70 games they'll have to win 20 of their last 24 struggling here against the tough net team and Albert King with his second basket in the last minute gives the Nets a 12 point lead again we have 5-10 remaining third period and Birdsong is called for the foul you know Albert King uh, probably has the most unrewarding job in the Atlantic Division. He has to guard Julius and Larry Bird and, guy, and his brother. Bernard, <laughs> that's right, with the Knicks. You're right. And if you do a good job, they only get 30. Foul on Birdsong was the 15th foul against the Nets, so they're in the penalty. And Philadelphia, with 5-11 to go in this third period, has yet to pick up their first team foul. Andrew Tony now has 12 points, give him 13 points in the game, averaging nearly 20 on the year. Sixers with plenty of range, 10 points, and plenty of time remaining. We're in the third period. They look now to Albert King. Julius is on him. Julius trying to prevent King from getting inside, but King hits the turnaround. Albert King now has hit eight points quickly and has 14 in the ball game. He has hit his last four. Tony, he's looking to get started, and he hits two, and now all of a sudden we're going to see the gems start to go to work in this game, Russ. Ten-point lead for New Jersey. That's what they've maintained here in the third. Let's Biggest see if they go to the hot hand again, Albert King. Biggest lead for the Nets was 12 points, and they're going to call a foul on Mark Ivoroni as substitutions come in the ball game, and both in the backcourt for Philadelphia, Franklin Edwards... Second year from Cleveland State, number 14 comes in. And 
coming into the ball game is Darwin Cook for the Nets, number 12. They're going to go the other way on a foul. It's on the Nets. Loose ball on Buck Williams. They get an offensive foul on Buck, not loose ball. There's Darwin Cook. And what they caught was a second foul. Which they catch quite often. A guy will hold you and then you push him off or hold him back and then you get caught. Traveling against Franklin Edwards. It'll be the Nets ball. 420 remaining. There's Edwards. 18th Philadelphia turnover. Michael Ray Richardson lo loses the ball. Clint Richardson has Irving and Edwards on the same side. Irving goes baseline. Malone. Didn't have control, never had control. Clint Richardson in the lane, hits the bucket. So Clint Richardson has nine points, and that's more than his season's average. Jaminski on the long pass, blocked by Malone. Basket good, and a foul. That's Jaminski's second effort, paid off. Second effort always pays off, almost. Well, always. Here's Mike O'Corin back in the ball game. Albert King goes out. He has 14 points, six this period. Len Elmore comes in for Buck Williams. And so we, for the first time in the game, and we have 351 remaining in the third, we have Jaminski and Elmore both in there. Jaminski has 10 points, six rebounds, and two blocks. A fine game. Darwin Cook is on Edwards, who goes to the hoop. He put a good move on Cook, but he couldn't get the bucket. Irving gambles for the steal. Michael Ray can go coast to coast, end to end. Richardson, Michael Ray, tipped in by O'Corin. <laughs> Biggest lead of the game right now for either side. New Jersey by 13. 318 remaining in the third period. Aaron pass, saved by Clint Richardson. Deflected by Michael Ray into the hands of Darwin Cook. Here come the Nets. O'Corin, foul. He'll shoot two, Mike. And it's on Clement Johnson right there. And this is one of the reasons it's so difficult to go through the whole season never losing two in a row. Philadelphia comes to town, sellout crowd, and the team is hopped up automatically. They want to knock you off when, you, when you're on top. Clement Johnson commits the foul. Michael Ray Richardson having an outstanding game despite not being 100% health-wise. Goes to the bench with 14 and Clarence puts Walker. 5'11 guard replaces him. So Walker and Cook who did so well in the second period. Now the guard tandem for the net. So Corin missed the first. Has one left with 3.03 remaining in the third period. And a 14-point lead. Stretching their largest of the game, 80 to 66. Philadelphia has not lost two in a row all season. They lost to Boston Friday, trying to avoid their second successive setback. Clint Richardson. Reggie Johnson was battling on the boards, and here come the Nets. They've got, they're on a roll, no question. And what the Nets are doing so effectively is they're making sure that the Sixers only get one shot. Darwin Cook. Puts Walker. And it's Elmore short on the baseline. And the Sixers love to run. They convert turnovers and rebounds into baskets. And it's blocked by Elmore on Franklin Edwards' foray. Jaminski, Cook, tipped in. No, Corin couldn't do it, and now Philly. Blistering end-to-end -end action for both sides. I'm getting tired sitting here. Less, almost two minutes remaining. Timeout, Philadelphia. Listen to the crowd. They love it. Jersey by 14. When it comes to home computers, the Atari home computer gets high grades. I use an Atari at home, and I, I use it for word processing and to teach myself other programming languages. Well, the graphics are probably some of the best you can find. The Atari 800 computer not only allows you to play games, it also allows you to learn math and history. Only one computer lets you enjoy this library of over 2,000 enlightening and entertaining programs. Atari Home Computers. The more you learn, the more you can program, and there's just no end to it. I'm late. Hi. We know little things going wrong can be a big nuisance when you travel.
That's why at American Airlines... We spend over a million dollars a day making sure everything goes right. From important inspections out here... To making sure everything works in here. Thanks. This is Philadelphia's lost chart. Portland and Boston beat the Sixers twice. Atlanta, Milwaukee, Washington, and Indiana once. The first two losses that the Sixers suffered this year were at home. The last one, November 23rd, the rest on the road. Boston was just Friday night. Well, the reason the Nets are able to stay in this game uh, and get the lead on them is because they're making them play a half-court game and they're beating them on the boards. Which is exactly how Jack Ramsey says best way to beat Philadelphia. Don't let them run. They get a little over anxious, and that's what the Nets are doing today. Clement Johnson turnaround shot. Under two minutes to go. There's Moses Malone and Julius Irving on and then the bench. Play, and then teams go into slumps. Now, sometimes a slump does not necessarily mean you lose games. It means that you're, you get out of sync, and if you play a, a good ball club that's playing heads up, they have a, a better chance of beating you. See, a slump for Philadelphia might be two straight, and for another team, it may be 12 straight. One second on the shot clock, and Jaminski gets it off in time. Misses it, and Reggie Johnson gets the rebound over to Franklin Edwards. The Sixers scored 30 points in the first 11 minutes of the game. Blocked by Elmore on Curitan. Jaminski loses the fight to Reggie Johnson, and Richardson in the lane again, and a foul. So the Sixers, who scored 30 in the first 11 minutes, have scored only 38 points in the last 22 minutes since then. So the early spurt by Philadelphia has died. Billy Cunningham trying to find the combination. He has done a marvelous job. Everyone talks about coaches of the year with surprise teams, teams that came out of nowhere to do well. What about a guy that leads a team with two new starters and four or five new men on their roster to a 50-8 and eight mark? And he never thought it would be this good this fast. Well, those two new starters weren't bad, though, especially <laughs> one of them. Loose ball, knocked away, and it's, it's going to be Nets ball, 80-69. to 69. They open up a 14-point lead here in the third period. Sixers have come back to cut it to 11. Earl Curitan is in the ball game, number 25. That's playing as much because of the acquisition of Johnson brothers, or not brothers, but the Johnson tandem. Tipped in by Jaminski. What a game Mike Jaminski is having. He has 12 points. Nine rebounds for Mike. Three centers have done the job. Franklin Edwards' ball drops. And Clint Richardson and uh, Franklin Edwards are, are chipping away and keeping the Sixers in the game. What Billy Cunningham is doing, this is uh, a tough part of the, of the game. you got to stay in there, rest your, your big guns, and get them ready for, this, for that final push. That's why before we saw Malone, Tony, and Irving on the sidelines, being down by 10, 11 points to this club going to the fourth quarter is well within range. Right. Two seconds, Darwin Cook hits the long-range shot with 10 seconds to go in the third period. And it's 84-71. to 71. Turnover, two-on-one. O'Corin. And Curitan with no time remaining, and that'll do it in the third period. And the Nets lead the 76ers, 84-71. to 71, And we'll return to the Burn Meadowlands Arena after this word from your local station. Monday on its new night and time. Can Alice and the gang face the music? And someday I'll be just as good in cellist as I am a waitress. Alice coming to Mondays at 9, 8 Central and 9. This is CBS. 300 years ago in Bavaria, German engineering was ahead of its time. Today, this Audi 5000 turbo diesel engine is also ahead in high technology. The 1983 Audi turbo diesel with the economy of a diesel and the power of a turbo. From the old world to the new world, the Audi 5000 turbo diesel, Audi, the art of engineering. If you live or work in the New York metropolitan area, there is an advantage to opening your money market account at Citibank. Access at more 24-hour banking locations in any bank around, day or night. From Brooklyn to Bay Shore, Wall Street to Westchester, Citibank lets you get to your FDIC-insured high-interest money market account round the clock. The city never sleeps, Citibank. 
if it concerns you, it concerns us. Fantastic. The preceding message was furnished by the National Basketball Association. The NBA on CBS is sponsored by Dodge, makers of America's full line of driving machines. Speed Stick Deodorant, the Wide Stick. Effective protection in just a few strokes. Speed Stick by Menon. And by Lowen Brown. When it's time for the taste of a truly great beer, let it be Lowen Brown. Dick Stockton and Bill Russell at the Burn Meadowlands Arena. The Nets lead 84 to 71 as we start the fourth period. Malone and Irving remain on the bench. Mo Cheeks, however, checks in the game at point guard. Albert King. Has 14, so does Buck Williams and Michael Ray Richardson for the Nets. Jaminski, 12, their high scorers. Tony with 15 and Malone with 11 are the leading scorers for Philadelphia. Earl Curidan, Clement Johnson, Franklin Edwards, Reggie Johnson, and Cheeks, who has the ball, trying to bring Philadelphia back. Inside to Curidan, good defense. And a follow-up shot by Clement Johnson is good. It's an 11-point game. What does Philadelphia have to do here? They're going to have to get their running game in gear and play a little better defense but the one thing that they, they did not do well for them is they did not control up their boards when does Moses and Julius come back oh it's plenty of time for that Darwin Cook outside misses the shot and the rebound taken by Clement Johnson and that was a tough pass to get by Foots Walker to Mo Cheeks goes in and draws the foul he'll shoot and a good pass by Clement Johnson a good indication is what Cheeks just did the running game get down fast before the defense had a chance to set up because when the Nets are able to set up defensively they're very difficult to score on because they're a good defensive team as a team when they're set up so the Sixers have to get down and shoot before they get a chance to set up defensively Darrell Dawkins picked up his fifth personal foul Corrin O'Corrin goes out, Albert King comes in, Buck Williams. So what I think Larry Brown's trying to do now is that he, Dawkins has five fouls, as we mentioned. As What Larry Brown's trying to do is he wants some of his better players in. He doesn't want Philadelphia to get so close so fast, does he? Well, what he wants to do is, is he has to hold these guys off that are out there now because what the Sixers are going to do is try to stay in the state of the ball game, get a little closer, creep up a little closer, and then finish with a rush with the, with the big guns, uh, Moses and Julius and Tony. 10-point lead for the Nets right now. Foots Walker, number 14. They get it inside to Buck Williams. Buck Williams misses, and Reggie Johnson. Now to Mo Cheeks. Five on four, Franklin Edwards. Hits the outside shot, and it's an eight-point game now. That's what I'm talking about. No chance to set up defensively. They get the running game in gear. If they do that, then the, the Nets are in for a long quarter. And wisely, Larry Brown calls an, calls an immediate timeout. Nets have an eight-point lead. He doesn't want it to get closer than that. Just the start of things. 10.45 to go in the fourth. GMC Truck presents Super Selling Days with big savings on GMC S15 pickups equipped with one of three red tag option packages. And there are super selling savings on red tag equipped GMC rallies and Vanduras and GMC full size pickups offering automatic transmission or air conditioning at no extra cost. Get a hard working GMC truck equipped for red tag savings during Super Selling Days now through May 31st at your GMC truck dealer. Yes, but just how did you get the money to pay this tax bill? Easy. I won $25,000 in the Schick Tax Time Sweepstakes. You can win, too. $5 to $25,000. Look for game cards and specially marked packages where you see the Schick razor blade display. Simply scratch the spot marked on the game card, and you'll know instantly if you're a winner. I won. I won $50. Don't forget to report it. <laughs> Let Schick shave your taxes. $100,000 in prizes. Over 12,000 winners. I can tell a real cowboy from the drugstore kind, clean across Texas. The way he wears his hat will tell you, and the beer that you drink is a surefire giveaway, too. 
A lot of us drink light beer for Miller. We love the taste, but we surely appreciate that it's got a third less calories than the regular kind. You see, you don't want to be filled up when you're out there punching doggies. Ain't that right, cowboy? I didn't punch that doggie. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. Coming up next, Marquette and DePaul at the Rosemont Horizon is Gary Bender for a report. Gary? Thank you, Dick Stockton. Almost tourney selection time, and no two teams are more aware of that than these two rivals, Marquette and DePaul, meeting for the 56th time. Marquette comes in here 18-8, and eight, but the last five years, DePaul has won this rivalry. On the other hand, DePaul is 15-10. and 10. They may be NIT bound. We'll be bringing you that game following the Nets and 76ers. Now let's go back to Dick Stockton. All right, Gary Bender and Billy Packer will be at courtside getting close to tournament time. We have a lot more coming up on CBS I'll tell you about in a moment. Following the basketball game, Philadelphia scored five straight points to cut the net lead to eight points. Albert King puts an end to that string. Albert now has 16, still on the bench. Moses Malone and Julia Serving. Merrick is downhill from Aspen. Same day coverage, plus the live cruiserweight fight between Leon Spinks Carlos De Leon still to follow on a big day of sports on CBS. Reggie Johnson hits the jump shot. That's what they wanted from Reggie Johnson. Plenty of time to go. Eight-point lead. King, Williams, Elmore, Cook, Walker. King has hit his last five. He's the hot hand for the Nets. Until that shot. Curitan, the rebound. Out to Mo. Mo Cheeks. Now, Philadelphia's bench is doing a great job. They're staying in this ball game without their, their three big guns. But the key is they put Murray's cheeks out there, and he's he's got this group planned together. He's take, he's a key guy out there right now because he's got the offense working. He is the true quarterback. He doles the ball off. He sets the running game pace. That's what Murray's cheeks does so well. Williams out to Foots Walker. Three seconds on the shot clock. Baseline Albert King. This is the drive. And that shot counted in a new clock for the Nets. 9.15 remaining, plenty of time. The Nets lead has been cut to six. It was 14. And a running shot by Foots Walker. Cunningham is waiting to use the aces up the sleeve. Tony, Malone, and Irving hopes to stay in the game with this group. And the lead pass to Darwin Cook. Goaltending. Called against Earl Curitan, and now the top gets to move. 90 to 80 the score. 10 point lead for New Jersey. 22 games better than their record of two years ago at this time, seven better than last year. They are making progress. Moses Malone will also come in. And Franklin Edwards from the corner. There they are. They've moved from the bench to the scorer's table, then they'll move to the court. Eight point lead for New Jersey. Edwards is 7 for 12. He came in the league last year with a reputation of being a hot hand from the field. Foots Walker, Albert King guarded by Clement Johnson. They switch Reggie Johnson on Buck Williams, who has double figures in points and rebounds for the eighth straight game. Buck has 16 points and 12 rebounds. A double-double, huh? That's right. We've heard of the triple-double <laughs> that Oscar Robertson made famous and Magic Johnson has made popular. Edwards forced it, but Curitan was there. Earl Curitan in his third year, a junior eligible from Detroit, back up center and forward. And the Sixers stay within range. Malone and Irving will be coming in the first break. The Nets lead. They've been leading most of this game in a steal by Mo Cheeks, one of the best. Cheeks all the way. Lost it. Foul, they say. Foul going in. And here they come back in. Moses Malone on the left, Julia Serving on the right, and the Nets are not going to sit still. Michael Ray Richardson will come in, as well as Mike Jaminski and Otis Bird's song. So we're really seeing the ammunition now. Well, I want to tell you, in this fourth quarter, the Philadelphia bench has shown why this team has won so many ball games. You hear a lot about their four, four All-Stars, but their bench has really been effective today. Like Clint Richardson. And Franklin Edwards in particular. And I think that uh, uh, Clement Johnson and Reggie Johnson. Yeah, uh, yes. They are uh, especially Clement Johnson on the on the offensive board. Cheeks has nine points. 
Working against Otis Birdsong, who's picked up Malone. Good defensive play. He stopped Birdsong from penetrating. King loses the ball. Curitan, and it's still Nets ball. And the continuation of the good defense by the seven sixes in this fourth quarter. I'll tell you how well the bench has done in a second for Philadelphia. 92-86, six-point lead, 7.15 remaining in the fourth period. Albert King with Irving on him hits the shot. Julius went out of the game with the Nets leading by 14, and he came back when it was six. So that shows you what the Sixers bench have done without Julius. Malone coming in and draws the foul. And if Malone can convert, it can be a six points again. Mike Jaminski commits the foul. So with Irving on the bench, as you pointed out, the bench has brought Philadelphia within range. And that's how you win all those games, because the, 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 your starters or your stars are not going to be able to run away and hide from everybody every night or every afternoon. Malone hits the first. And Julius Irving, who has scored only four points in the game. How many times have you seen Irving with four, five, eight points, and then all of a sudden, the last three minutes, he owns? Well, another thing, he does a lot of other things besides scoring. He's a, he's, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's developing to a great passer and a good defensive player. He reached in on Albert King to commit the foul there. Sixers have a lot of the players like Irving and Malone and Tony who, who really want to be there at the end and take that last shot. Not everyone does. I know that. I was never particularly <laughs> fond of taking the last shot, I can tell you that. You didn't have to. You had some people who did. I'm sure glad that I was so glad of that too. We're gonna have a New Jersey timeout. You had guys like Sam Jones, who uh, by the way. I think one of these days deserves to be in the Hall of Fame with some of the, some of the other great players. Huh? He should be punished like that. <laughs> 6.47 remaining in the fourth. People care and take care of you. And the amazing wizard computer that makes Avis Express with no bus pass unique. And in our large Cadillac fleet that we rent at cutless prices. All with free unlimited mileage. Come in and try us. You'll see for yourself why trying harder makes Avis second to none. Holly, I think we're lost. That's because I can't see out this windshield. What we need is a new set of ankle wiper blades, like these. Yes. Give me those. Replace your old wipers with Anko blades at least once a year. Their special formulated natural mm -hmm. rubber gives both American and import cars a clean, smooth wipe. See? That's much better. But this weather is unbearable. It certainly is, Ollie. Let me remind you what else is coming up on CBS in a big day of sports. Of course, we have Marquette and DePaul. You heard from Gary Bender, NCAA basketball. And then we have on CBS Sports Sunday, America's downhill from Aspen, Colorado. Same day coverage. And, of course, the cruiserweight fight between Leon Spinks and former champion Carlos De Leon. Where, what, what position are the Nets in right now? What position are the Sixers in for the big drive with 6.47 to go? Well, both coaches have manipulated their lineups so that they can go down a stretch with what they think is their best team according to the way they play today and the guys that are available and both teams are, are have a pretty strong group uh, the Nets might be a little strong if they had Dawkins available but he's gotten in foul trouble so that um, Larry Brown had to adjust he's got five personals on the bench but he could still come back with five obviously short is Bo Birdsong who pleads for the foul doesn't get it Mo Cheeks driving 94 to 90. There's Daryl Dawkins, who played with this Philadelphia team last year. A four-point game and a technical foul has been called against Otis Birdsong for too much of a vehement complaint following that steal by Maurice Cheeks. That's, and he's still going at it. And Julius Irving will shoot the technical. 
And he'll never win that argument, I can tell you that. It's he a three-point tie. It's a three-point game. It was a 14-point lead at 80 to 66. That's it's now a three-point game. And the, the today is a good example of why Maurice Cheeks, I said earlier, is one of the most underrated players because he took the the bench and he's out there with him and and brought him back into the game and he's playing the great defense. Buck Williams. Buck Williams now with 18 points. So the two second-year forwards from Maryland, each with 18. Buck has 13 rebounds to go with it. 96 to 91. Malone facing the basket against Jaminski. Air ball. Here comes King. Birdsong. He's got it. Clock running, 5.35 remaining. Fourth period. Barry's cheeks penetrating almost every time down and a net foul. Sixers got to within three, the closest since the Nets had a 52 to 51 lead in the second period. What will be a factor down the stretch, Bill, will be the timeout situation. Philadelphia has four plus a 20, and the Nets three plus a 20. Five and a half minutes remaining in the fourth period. 98 91, New Jersey leading. Philadelphia has not lost two in a row yet this year. They lose this game, it'll be the first time. Michael Ray Richardson nearly steals it. Cheeks comes right back. Penetrates again. Malone. Buck Williams. There's the rebound. They trap Michael Ray. Offensive foul on Michael Ray Richardson. He tried to go between two. And a timeout. Billy wants a timeout. Philadelphia trailing by seven. And Philadelphia is making their run now. The Nets are going to have to hold them off. It's now or never. The standing quarter mile. This machine is about to attack it. A motorcycle that can turn 65 cubic inches into an incredible amount of horsepower. The Honda V65 Magna. It's about to become the world's fastest production motorcycle. You know, repairs cost so much. It's terrific you're trying to be handy. What do you mean trying? Peer Peerless makes it easy to be handy. I'm going to hook up this do-it-yourself Peerless faucet, and these are the only tools I'm going to use. Watch. Just insert the flexible copper tubing and turn the special tightener by hand. Bend the tubing by hand. Then snap the quick connectors by hand. No tools, and it's finished in a snap. Water! And making it easy to be handy, peerless is peerless. You in a bad mood? Uh-uh. I just hate talking in the morning. I'll, I'll let you shave. No. Stay. You use Noxema. Yeah, I see it gives me a great shave. It does something to condition my skin. Mm, it softens it. Huh? I can tell when you kiss me. Your face feels real smooth. Well, I guess it's the moisturizers. It... I hate talking in the morning, too. Noxema Medicated Shave Cream. Share the softness. Today on CBS Sports Sunday, live from Aspen, top to bottom coverage of the men's giant slalom with World Cup titles at stake. Plus, Leon Spinks and Carlos De Leon. Today... Well, that won't be the slalom. It'll be the downhill canceled yesterday because of the excessive snow in Aspen. You'll see America's downhill. Phil Mayer, the overall leader in the World Cup. Franz Klammer, the veteran, making a big bid. World Cup skiing, same-day coverage, America's downhill at 4.30 Eastern. Plus, Leon Spinks in the cruiserweight division trying to pick up a championship eventually there against the former champ. And there you're looking at a couple of champions in Julius Irving and Moses Malone. But they are not shooting well today. Five for 21 combined in each has made only one field goal since the first period. The rebounding story. Irving and Malone have only 18 points between them. 98 to 91. As Bill said before we went to commercial. Now or never for Philadelphia making their run now. Nets trying to hold them off. Julius on the floor. We'll have a jump ball. 
Philadelphia's biggest lead was seven in the first quarter. New Jersey had a 14-point lead in the third. And New Jersey continues to play real strong half-court defense. 4.45 remaining in the fourth period. The jump control by the Nets. Intercepted by Cheeks. Jaminski back. Cheeks dunks it. <laughs> now I want to see Tony's behind the back dunk. <laughs> Andrews, that large person. Andrews in the game, so Clement Johnson, Tony, Cheeks, Malone, and Irving, the four All-Stars, join Clement Johnson for Philadelphia. 98-93, five-point game, 420 to go. Getting loose is Buck Williams and a fine feed from Albert King. Again, and what the Nets did then was make Philadelphia play the half-court defense. Cheeks going up top this time. So he saw the stuff by Mo, and he see him go up top 11 points in this fourth period. Offense from an un unlikely source, or unexpected source, we should say. Michael Ray Richardson controls. 3.53 remaining. And a five-point lead for the Nets, and will have a holding foul against Philly. Their second team foul of this fourth period. The Nets have four. And we're going to take a timeout now. So the team foul story, the Nets four, one more there in the penalty. Philadelphia has a couple of give. And New Jersey maintains that lead. It's so tentative balance right now. It's so small that it has them worried. I once rolled a log off a 100-foot waterfall, came up standing, and popped myself open a cold, light beer from milk. Ah, you lumberjacks. Well, one time a big mouth bass pulled me up a waterfall. <laughs> That's when you appreciate light beer, because it's less filling. Yeah, but it was the thought of light's great taste that kept me going when I was cutting timber in the Great Sahara Forest. Wait a minute. Sahara's a desert. It is now. <laughs> light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. No, speaking of forest, remember that time... From Radio Shack, the TRS-80 Model 3. And at $200 off, it's a great value. Select from Radio Shack's huge program library to aid your children's education, plan your personal and household budgets, or to entertain with fast action games. You can even learn to write programs. The TRS-80 Model 3, on sale for $7.99. Only at Radio Shack and Radio Shack Computer Centers. The computer experts. Compare dandruff shampoos. There's good, there's better, and then there's blue. Selsun Blue, the best dandruff shampoo money can buy. Clinical testing among leading brands proved it works best with more complete dandruff control. Selsun Blue is the only leading brand with the anti-dandruff ingredient doctors prescribe most. Remember, there's good, there's better, and there's blue. Selsun Blue, it simply works the best. Some say he is invincible. Current champion Scott Hamilton. The World Figure Skating Championships. Next weekend on CBS Sports. And before we head to Helsinki, we've got a finish of a superb game here. I want to remind you at the conclusion of this game in each of our NBA telecasts, we select the Miller Most Valuable Player of the Game. Miller will present a check for $1,000 to the Special Olympics organization in the name of the player selected. And Bill, you and I will be voting for the MVP, and today's winner will be announced at the end of the telecast. It's interesting to me, Dick, that uh, going down the stretch, Billy Cunningham is using uh, Truman Johnson. Yeah, but... And, and, and Larry... Brown is going with Daryl Dawkins, although he does have five fouls. Well, he's got the rebounder and the defensive player and Clement Johnson in there. Dawkins with five fouls is in the game indeed. Birdsong in the lane, didn't have much control, misses the shot, and King almost with the interception. Andrew Tony loops it to Doc, and he knocks the ball off of Williams, and it hit Julius, but Julius was out of bounds. So Philadelphia has a chance to narrow it to three with that much time remaining, 3.36 in this fourth period. You ever notice how the, the good teams always get the lucky bouncers? Always. Malone gets it to Tony. A bird song close to the steal. Albert King is fronting Julius. Tony in the lane and it doesn't drop for him. Fight for the loose ball. Irving. And Michael Ray Richardson and Moses Malone fought and the foul will be against Philadelphia. No, uh, they call it on um, Michael Ray Richardson, I think. All right, you're right. I stand corrected. Ed Middleton was heading the other way, and the crowd now is in sync. 
Dawkins has to hold Michael Ray and just calm him down a little bit. He was going the other way, Russ. And the crowd well, he was... did crash the boards. That is the fourth personal foul on Richardson. And Malone is on the line, shooting one and a penalty. He is seven for ten from the free throw line at that time. Let's see if we can see that play. Now, here's a miss by Irving. Moses has Malone, and there comes Richardson. There they go. Three minutes and 20 seconds now remaining in the fourth period. The Nets 100, the Sixers 96. Dawkins setting a pick outside for Birdsong, and on a switch picked up by Malone. Birdsong, no good. Up and in. Up and in by Dawkins, and a big basket by Daryl Dawkins. Winding down to three minutes to go. They go to Malone immediately. Double team. Relentless foul. He is relentless inside, and Malone will go to the line to shoot two. Daryl Dawkins is fouled out on this play. And the relentless Moses Malone was not to be denied. So fouling out is Dawkins with six points and two rebounds. Yeah, that's one of the fouls that you're going to get if you play good right. defense. And it's those little silly fouls that got him out of the game. The early ones. Right. Yes. Mike Jaminski replaces him. Jaminski's had an outstanding game with 12 points and nine rebounds. Malone now. There's Jaminski. Malone is 8 for 13 from the line. And a five-point lead for the Nets. 102-97, 2.55 to go. We'll check the timeout story for you. It'll be a factor down the stretch. Michael Ray Richardson control. Coming out is Birdsong. Albert King outside. Clemens Johnson the rebound. Lead pass, Irving. Jaminski commits the foul on Julius with 2.33 to go. What's the Nets' complaint on that one? <laughs> they thought maybe three seconds or steps. Either one. Not really. Philadelphia has gone on the line 33 times. The Nets 15. Larry Brown is really mad on the sidelines. He normally doesn't lose his cool, although he was tossed out with two technicals last week. One of two for Julius, and he's got another one to go. Lane violation called against the Nets. Julius will have another one. Now that's not a very good violation. 102. 99. Three-point lead for the Nets. Each team has three timeouts and one 20-second timeout. NBA on CBS. Dick Stockton and Bill Russell. The finish to two of the power teams in the Atlantic Division. Birdsaw with King against Julius. Irving blocks the shot, and Moses saves it. Julius... Basket. And it's a one point game. The place is going wild here in New Jersey. The net lead, once 14, has been cut to one with under two minutes to play. Richardson in the lane, passing inside the King, goes up. It's Nets ball. Now Julius is going to the defense. Albert King goes up, blocked there. Moses gets the ball, lifts up court. There's Julius at the other end, comes up with it. Knows what to do with it. And meanwhile, back to live action. The Nets have it with five seconds on the clock. And we'll have a foul on Andrew Tony. Tony pushed Birdsong for Andrew is third. And that is the third team foul for Philadelphia. Trailing 102 to 101. At stake right here, the 76ers trying to avoid losing two in a row for the first time this year. No club has gone through an NBA season without losing... At least two in a row. Philadelphia needs a win here to prevent it. They're 50 and 8 on the year. The Nets an improving franchise. Trying to hang in there and they do it. Birdsong 
very important basket there. But because it holds the Philadelphia off one more time. Three point lead and a steal by Albert King. He, he did not lose it. Using the clock now with 113 as you see and 14 seconds on the 24 second clock. And a wild shot by Birdsong goes. Timeout, Philadelphia. Can New Jersey hang on with 107 to go? We'll find out. When you stay at a big, fancy hotel, you pay for a lot more than your room. You don't need a fancy hotel to get a big, comfortable room. You can get one at Howard Johnson's, along with a big bathroom, an oversized bed, and a lot of personal comforts to make you feel good, all at a sensible price. At Howard Johnson's, we don't care about the fanfare. We care about the things that count most. Confidence, we install it at Sears. Confidence, you're looking at it. I can replace your old muffler with a Sears muzzler for only $19.99 plus labor, guaranteed for as long as you own the car. If it fails, we'll replace it free. Want confidence in your brakes? I've been installing it for years. We'll give you a two-wheel brake job for only $79.99 with a 25,000-mile warranty on brake linings. At Sears Tire and Auto Centers, we install confidence day and night. Sears. Otis Birdsong wasn't running out of time on the clock. If you're a coach, do you love him or hate him for this? You love him because he's playing. And you got to go out. Guys got to go out there and play. No matter what your strategy is, you got to have guys that can go out there and do it physically. And that's his game. See, these guys are so good that with, in another level, it would not be a good shot. But at this level, that's a good shot. That's a good play. And, of course, I was facetious because, you know, he wouldn't hate Otis Birdsong, who has been such a terrific player just a couple of years ago was sixth in the NBA in scoring, so he has done it. He averaged 24-6 that year. There's Otis Birdsong, quiet from Kansas City, was reunited with Phil Ford, one of many players that have passed through the revolving door of the Nets. But Birdsong has hung in there, and of course last year he had an injured right knee and missed a lot of games, 47 to be exact. All right, five-point lead. Philadelphia has the ball with one minute to go. Tony's three-point shot doesn't make it. And it should be the next ball. It is. Heads up play by Buck Williams. He did to Julius what Julius was trying to do to him. Both were trying to knock the ball off the other guy. This is a big segment for the Nets. If they can use up a good deal of the clock and get two points here, they could very well be in control. It's Michael Ray Richardson against Mo Cheeks. They have 11 seconds on the shot clock. And Mo Cheeks nearly with a steal. King gets it inside, and a Buck Williams will go to the line, and it may be just as good. That's the only kind of shot he should have taken. The high percentage shot. <laughs> Buck Williams has 20 points, 15 rebounds, and two block shots. He is 10 of 14 from the field. Moses Malone. Birdsong. Goes out, he has scored 15 points and gotten some key buckets. Uh, Dick, I think that I would vote for Buck Williams as the uh, MVP today. Funny, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> that is, if they can hold up this six or seven point lead. Big free throw coming up for Williams. 108 101. Lead. And that eliminates or pushes up the two three point plays. Philadelphia has one more timeout plus the 22nd. New Jersey has three, but Philadelphia is really the timeout story here. Keep in mind that this franchise started with the ABA in Long Island when they were champions. They went to Piscataway, second year here at the Burn Meadowlands Arena. They sold Julius Irving to Philadelphia and went downhill. Let's listen to Larry you Brown. And Darwin's in. You remember, you we have three timeouts in a 20. The other thing, offensively, last trip, they ran a two-time as the clock was running out. And they come with the baseline man. So our, our postman's got to come to the middle. 
All right? I want to spread it. Darwin and Albert will have, um, look, have G-Man and Buck. Sugar, you you get yourself free in the middle. We're just going to use the clock. Now, last time, Clemens Johnson set the screen on your man for the three-pointer. You got to get up on that. Don't switch it, but talk the guy through. All right? Talk the guy through. The other thing, break. Don't, don't ever walk the ball up against pressure. You break, you have more time to utilize. All right? Hey, any problem, three timeouts in a 20. Constantly no teaching is Larry Brown, who has been really an outstanding coach with the ABA and then with the NBA. What he means by talk your man through is instead of switching, you step back and let your man through and talk to him and tell him where everybody is. So he said, go through, go through, I'm going to let you through. That's what he means by talk your man through on the pick so that you can stay with your man and not get a switch and a mismatch. 35 seconds to go and 24 on the shot clock. Philadelphia will try to get three. They can't do anything less than that. They've got to free someone for the three-point. The Sixers close the game, the 102 to 101. The Nets have scored the last six points. Clement Johnson inbounding. Finds Tony who loses it out of bounds. And the reason for that is the time between the two players because Tim and Jones is new. Julius uh, uh, Moser, one of the guys could have got that ball inbounds to him. Steps called against the Nets, Michael Ray Richardson. So Philadelphia has it now, but the time are running out on them. 30 seconds remaining. And now Billy Cunningham is going to use a 20-second timeout right now. So Philadelphia has one full timeout remaining. And they lost five seconds on that exchange. A lot of people may not realize that the Nets, when they were in Long Island, won the ABA championship in 1976. Then they sold Julius Irving when they joined the NBA to Philadelphia. The 76ers then became big winners. The last six years, the best regular season record in the game. The Nets went the other way. Five losing seasons, winning 22, 24, 37. So they've had to pick themselves up from the bootstraps and re kind of rebuild a team with a lot of players passing from the scene. And in two years at the Burn Meadow Lands Arena with Larry Brown, the Nets are in the right direction. Quickly. Fifth best record in the league, as you pointed out. 108-101, New Jersey leading Philadelphia. 30 seconds to go, and Julius will inbound. Out to Tony, and Michael Ray Richardson is with him. Tony wants the three. Michael Ray doesn't give it to him. Irving for three. He's got it. 23 seconds on the clock, 108-104. Keep in mind, Philadelphia has one timeout remaining. And now timeout called by the Nets. And Maurice Cheeks almost, in fact, he might have made them knock the ball out of bounds or he didn't get the call, but Maurice Cheeks almost came up with a steal on that play uh, or turnover. High scores we'll give you right now. Buck Williams, 22, Albert King, 18, Birdsong, 15, and Michael Ray Richardson, 14. Jaminski, 12 off the bench. Let's hear Larry. Taking the ball out here, all right? Footy, you're here. You're setting a back screen on Buck. Buck's going to the goal, all right? And then roll with the ball. Darwin, you set a back screen on Albert, and Albert rolls back right here, and Darwin, you come to the ball. Sugar, as soon as you hit, sprint to the middle, and let's take it down. If there's any hesitation, we got a timeout. We have two timeouts in a 20. You count 1,001, 1,002, 1,003 on the sideline. Sugar, you're allowed to run sideline. It's after a main. All right, offensively. I don't think you can. There was a spot throw in that one. They put out of bounds. They knocked it out of bounds. Uh, all right, that's true. Can't that's move. true. It's not. You're not allowed to move. Don't now, move. Hey, let's set a good back screen now, footy, and roll to the ball. Going the same thing. All right, Albert. What? I know. Hey, now, if there's any hesitation, time out. When we get it down in the half court area, footy and Darwin are out. Albert and Buck in the mid, down the baseline. You're in the middle. Let's go. No shot. to let him foul us. Executive producer Ted Shanker of NBA Basketball, a game produced. Expertly by Michael Burks and directed superbly by John McDonough. Thanks to everyone that had a part in this game. Bob Matina, Marty Aronoff, our right-hand man at every event. Carl Prince, Richie Zients. Billy Cunningham did not want us to go into their huddle. That's why we're only hearing Larry Brown, but he's talking in his. 23 seconds to go. 108, 104 the score, and they wisely call another timeout. Michael Ray Richardson couldn't find a guy to throw it to. That's because the Philadelphia's got a good defensive team in there. And this is going to be a long 23 seconds, I guess, uh, for the Nets. 
Don't forget, coming right up after this game, it'll be Marquette and DePaul. Marquette against DePaul coming up next, and NCAA championship tournament berth could go to the winner here. I want you, Darwin, to sprint to the ball, all right? What's Philadelphia have to do with 23 seconds to go and down by four? Here's Sugar. Come up with a steal or a turnover and make them a five-second violation, trying to get the ball in bounds. Make a three-pointer and then do the same thing again. And then you only have to make a two-pointer going overtime. They would, they would love to have an overtime. It's hard to hear you because we're hearing Larry and we have heard him a lot lately, but... So what is, does Philadelphia have to foul just to stop the clock? No, a foul wouldn't help them because uh, they don't want to send the, the, the nest to the foul line. But what they want to do is to try maybe get a five-second violation getting the ball inbounds. They're playing pretty good defense down here. They make them work to bring the ball up to midcourt? No, they, they got to come up with a steal because they, what they have to do is, is try to get the ball the first, uh, say, seven seconds. Make a three-pointer, and then go for defense again and try to get a two-pointer then. We've seen teams come from behind like this, but against a team like the Nets, when you have 23 seconds to go one timeout down by four, you need two chances on the bat, on the offense. It's basically what you need. Now, what the Nets did was uh, bring the ball to the front court because they have an option where they want it. There's the timeout story. Sixers need the ball twice, and they have to prevent... The Nets from scoring. And they want to make him try to make a long pass. And with Moses and Clement Johnson there, they, they want him to throw, to throw a lob pass. Right now, they want to make sure that Albert King has enough room to get the ball in. He needs three feet to get it now to Walker. Walker, 19 seconds to go. And this is the four corners offense that Larry Brown played under in North Carolina. And Cheeks has no other choice but to foul Albert King with 14 seconds to go. And two free throws here will ice it. Word about Jeminski and Elmore because we went into the game talking about how imposing Moses Malone is for everyone in the league, the leading rebounder, sixth top scorer. Between the two of them, Jeminski and Elmore have 16 points, 15 rebounds, and four block shots. And Dawkins fouled out. So I think the Nets, one of the keys to them today, besides their defense, has been the play of their centers. Well, their front line played very well. Because you, you, you got to remember that uh, Buck Williams had another outstanding game, but I think he had 15 rebounds himself. 14 seconds. King. But the Philadelphia backcourt, especially with Maurice Cheeks, had an outstanding game. 110 to 104. Right now, while we're waiting, let's go to Brent Musburger across the river at our studios. All right, Dick, and I want to remind everyone that right after the NBA action here on CBS, it'll be Marquette and DePaul. Gary Bender and Billy Packer are standing by. You'll see all of that action live, and then it will be fight time here on CBS. Cruiserweight bout, Leon Spinks against Carlos Sugar DeLone, and also we will be bringing you coverage of America's downhill. It has cleared out at the Aspen Mountain, and we will bring you all of that coverage still to come here this afternoon on CBS. And remember... Philadelphia could lose back-to-back -back games for the first time this season. Let's go back now to Dick and Bill Russell. All right, Brent, Philadelphia using its last timeout. They don't have anything. New Jersey 1 plus a 20, a six-point lead with 14 seconds to go. And I would have to say that we're going to give the most valuable Miller, most valuable player award to Buck Williams. We've already kind of hinted at it, but Buck Williams will be our MVP. He has scored... 22 points with 10 for 14 from the field, 15 rebounds and two block shots. Albert King, who had 20 points, deserved tremendous consideration too. And Maurice Cheeks for Philadelphia in what may be a losing cause here. But there is our Miller MVP, a $1,000 donation to the Special Olympics in the name of Buck Williams. The strong, silent type. 110 to 104. The Nets are 14 seconds away from inflicting the second straight setback to the Philadelphia 76ers who need 20 wins out of the last 23 if they lose this game to achieve the 70 win mark more than any other team in the history of the NBA. The Lakers of 72-169. Pass into Andrew Toney. Three-point range. And Tony goes up and misses it. He gets the ball in the corner with nine seconds and stepped on the line. So the Nets are going to win this one as they have the ball with nine seconds to go. 
and an immediate foul. Balanced scoring for the Nets. Williams with 22, King with 20, Birdsong 15, Michael Ray Richardson, despite the ear infection and the stomach virus, 14 points and played an outstanding game. Mike Jaminski, 12. And the high scores for Philadelphia, bunch of 15. Tony, Cheeks, and Malone. Buck Williams goes out to a well-deserved hand. The Nets were able to make the Philadelphia team most of the day play the half-court game. And, and the Nets in a half-court game are as strong on the boards as anybody in the league. What does this do for the Nets? They have a lot of games the remainder of the season against Philadelphia and Boston. They beat the Lakers. They won a string of games early in the season. This is a big feather in their cap. Yes. And it's uh, one more game they have not lost. Cheeks goes all the way, and the Nets, of course, will give him that with two seconds to go. And the New Jersey Nets have defeated the Philadelphia 76ers. 112 to 106. Victory for Larry Brown. Well deserved, well coached game for Billy Cunningham. The 76ers have gone down to defeat for the second straight time. And that's the first time the 76ers have lost two in a row. Coming up next, it'll be Marquette and DePaul. Exciting NCAA college basketball action on CBS. So for Bill Russell, this is Dick Stockton saying so long from the Burn Meadowlands Arena, where the Nets beat the Sixers 112 to 106. So long, everybody.